Righty, oh then. I think we should be all good to go. I'm just going to double check that the uh, live is kicking in. I see the live kicking in, which means we are here. So, what it do, guys? Welcome to episode four. And oh boy, it's probably going to be a bit of a big one because we got a lot to cover inside this episode. And this episode is going to be. For anybody who is new to Warframe, interested about the Daviri Paradox update, and any player who is returning back to Warframe who wants to know what actually is the Daviri Paradox. Now, I may not cover all of the lore about it because it's a bit of a head scratcher, but for the most part, we will be able to go and dive straight into it and uh, be able to break down about well, what is actually going on right here. Okay, so my daily tribute i got 50 percent off platinum purchases which is actually good because uh, i was talking about these daily tributes the last couple of days uh, that we were or in the last episode i should go and say and um this is the stuff that you can go and get you can go and get a platinum discount so you can save yourself a bit of money whenever you go and see these and if you are considering to spend money on warframe there's a showcase right there but otherwise like I said, today's episode is going to be everything and anything about the Viri Paradox. So if you do want to know more about Warframe outside of the Viri Paradox, my advice to you is to go check episode one all the way through episode three. Um, please do please do keep in mind, if there is a new player right now uh, watching this series, uh, I will be covering a lot of stuff that I've already kind of covered in episode one, episode two, episode three, for your benefit as well. So I'm going to try and break down, I'll just say some tips and tricks, what's going on, what I'm doing, how I'm using these things. But without further ado, I think it's about time that we go ahead and jump into the uh, Daviri Paradox. I just want to see, can I begin quest here? I can also begin quest here if I wanted to inside my codex. So I can click begin or you can come to your navigation over here and in the top right, you're going to have these selections. This is Railjack. So don't worry about this one right now. It's this one that we're going to be looking for, which is the the very paradox update. So we're going to click over here and I'll explain all of these spirals and what's going on and how this all works, because this will actually split off into a few different directions. Um, but what we want to go and do is enter the kingdom of the very. I don't actually know if this does start the quest in the same way. I believe it does. So I think we can just click. Yeah, there we go. So we got a lot to dive into right now. Oh my goodness, do we have a lot to dive into. I got myself a cup of tea. Sorry I'm a bit late for today's live stream, but everybody else who's kind of watching through the VODs, um, I'm hoping that you guys find this well. And um, if there is anything that you guys do struggle with, you can go ahead and ask questions. But hopefully the goal for this... Um, the goal for this session right now is to explain everything that you can do here, what you should be doing here, why are you here, and what you want to be doing. Um... Now, I'm not going to be watching cutscenes. As per usual, I will be skipping cutscenes. So we're jumping straight into it. I would advise you again, if you're a new or a returning player, watch the cutscenes, okay? Anything I can or anything I can or possibly will go ahead and skip, I'm, I'm just jumping straight to skipping them, all right? So I can't skip this right now. <laughs> so it goes, day by day, year by year. Seems a bit framey there. Don't worry, it's not framey on the OBS. It's framey on the, uh, the game. So, yes, this is the very paradox, and you're going to see someone on your screen right now. This is your main kind of character, if you will. This is Drifter. Um, won't cover too much about him right now. Who is he if you're a bit of a new player, and who is he if you're a returning player? I won't explain too much about what you're seeing right now. If you're a returning player, you might have an idea. If you're not a returning player, don't worry. So you can go ahead and customize your Drifter here if you want to. I think I look absolutely glorious anyways, so I'm just going to go in here, continue. Even such as, you can go ahead and customize them later anyways, so don't panic too much. And just like that, thank you guys for watching episode four. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys again in... E nah, Jay. <laughs> We're not actually dead. Spoilers. <laughs> Could you imagine that's it? We just we just cut. We just cut and then that's it. That's the end of episode four. Straight into episode five. Like... <laughs> oh, that would be really funny. So as a new player, this is going to be extremely confusing what's actually about to happen right now. Um, I could only imagine how confusing this is going to be. As a returning player, it kind of depends where you are in the storyline of where you once left off. Okay? Because some stuff is going to happen that I'm not going to explain straight away. Um, it will spoil new players and returning players might have to get a rough idea. Okay? 
So forgive me again if I don't over... I'll dive into the lore enough that you guys will understand kind of what's going on around you, but you might not have the exact answers that you're looking for. Because again, Warframe's got a pretty decent story, so you want to try and keep progressing through the star chart and learn what the story is. Can I skip any of this? I can't. Some people would, would have recognized what's happening here and again others won't so if you're a newer player and you're like well, what what's this all about keep playing the game keep doing all your main stories so you get to this point my beard looks atrocious what is going on never mind right so as soon as we go ahead and start this is what the very paradox is going to look like it's a very different to traditional warframe so if you are playing warframe for the very first time and you're expecting everything to be like this no let me just cut you right there the game is a lot more different outside of what you'll see in here this is why i did episode one two and three first because that's the true warframe experience right here if you took the if you took the daviri path when you started warframe this is what you're doing for the this is the first things that you're seeing so there's a lot of warframe elements in here but please don't expect all of warframe from here onwards to look like and feel like this so anyways let's go ahead and take this we got the sirocco drifter's gun and uh, we just got a quick uh, aim and shoot on it. Has this got the... Okay, cool. So I'll just quickly go and teach this straight off the bat anyways. So you can go ahead and just kind of... You got your shots in the bottom right down there and so forth. But if you actually go ahead and reload at the right time at the bottom, you get a charge shot. That's how the gun works. You get like a perfect reload. See that there? So if you're looking for more damage in one shot, that's what happened. But keep in mind, the rest of the shots are normal. It's just the first shot that you time does that. However, if you fail it like this... The bar disappears, and you just got normal shots, right? Anyways, what we want to go and do is use our second ability. This is called Guidance. Now, I'm going to say this right here, right now. Any kind of waypoints within Warframe can get bugged. It can be a little bit confusing. So, ideally, uh, I don't actually know if I can fully open my map here. I think I can. There we go. So, we're kind of down here right now. I think we want to get, like, across here. So, uh... All you want to go and do is make sure these guys don't touch you or anything else like that. So you can do your normal sprint. You can do jump. You can go ahead and sprint and into slides. You can do all of this kind of normal combat if you want to. But just be careful of where the enemies are around you. If they do spot you like so, throw a smoke screen down if you can. And then just say goodbye to him. Don't worry. Movement will come to you. I do realize I might be going a little bit quick at times. Um, but that's just the nature of the game for me at this point. So please don't blame me because of that. Can I skip this? So again, you can always go and press your two. Remember that you can go and use this for guidance if you so need to. I'm just going to try and time my rolls if I can with the way that he's shooting so that I don't get hit by these arrows. Don't get baited by that horse just yet. <laughs> Some of you guys will run up to that horse. Uh, it doesn't do anything just yet. Okay. Rightio then, so we're done with... Oh, we're done with that part. So now we need to go ahead and find the horse. All right. When I first did this, I grabbed the horse urgently and um, never mind. But yes, the very paradox has got horses in them. This is Kaith. You'll learn more about Kaith a little bit later. But Kaith pretty much accepts us or he's just going to get absolutely deleted by this guy. And then if you, if you can remember how to bullet jump in the game, basically if you hold control... And then go ahead and tap space. You'll do this. Oh, no, you won't. Okay, apparently he doesn't have it at the minute. Never mind. Just double jump over the bridge. <laughs> I thought you could fly straight off the bat. Forgive me. Spoilers. Right, from here onwards, uh, we can just let the hand guide us. So you can go and press 2 if you want to. And you can just keep following this. If by any chance this does go ahead and, you know, bug out or anything else like that, then just continue to follow my direction. Getting a couple of frame drops now and then, but nothing to... Hopefully everything looks all right. Can you live viewers just confirm everything looks all right? Anyways, right. So we're going to go towards this thing here. And it should go and take us into the cave. And again, if at any point I'm going... Oh my god. If at any point I'm going quite quick, you can always go and just tell me to uh, slow down. It looks fine for you guys. Okay. Forgive the, the stutters every now and then. At least for me, it's stuttering. I don't actually know why it's stuttering. No idea. 
So we're just going to continue to follow this. But this is the uh, the Viri Paradox open world. It is beautiful. The most recent Warframe update. Now, there is something to be said. There will be a, another Warframe update that will actually add an extra island into this vicinity. Um, as of right now, this island currently is not here. But there will be an extra island. And we'll talk about these kind of islands as we get a bit further. Like the Ark Harbor, the Amphitheater, and so forth. Right? There will be another one for Colervo's update. As of right here in this recording, Colervo's update is not live. Just letting you guys know that in advance in case you're coming back and you're like oh yeah you know, it's cl clover there so this is bomber scene again i'd recommend listening to everything and going through the law yourself and so forth uh for the sheer purpose to save a bit of time because i got a lot of stuff to kind of talk about uh, i will be skipping dialogue and i will be skipping um cut scenes so please feel free to pause the video and then catch up to where we currently have like left off all right radio then So, this is an interesting bit of a flashback thing going on here. Uh, what you want to do, so yeah, this is, oh god, this is so confusing to new players. How do I even begin to explain this kind of stuff? Um, you might see a bit of a younger version of what looks like could potentially be represented as you. Better, easier, just to go and remember that that basically is, okay? But we'll get more to that in a moment. What you will notice inside these kind of areas, pay attention you'll hear a whistle. If you just be quiet, um, you can hear the direction of the whistle. So what we're going to go and do is get my character to run through the light. I think that was more to my left. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, okay. It was right behind me, so it sounded to my left. So I'm just going to walk backwards. That sounds over there. And that sounds over here somewhere. So it wants me to go and get on top of there. The way that I can do this, I kind of ignore my light for a second and I just walk up on this. My character will always kind of mirror match me. Okay. And then we go towards the middle. And what we get is this little figure, just like this little figurine, if you will. And this is important to the quest and to the lore. We'll explain a bit more about that as we continue a bit later, okay? Um... Right, we got intrinsics. Intrinsics are going to be like your, how do I say, your like XP, if you will, inside this area, inside the very paradox. If you've ever done the Railjack update, you'll kind of know about intrinsics. Intrinsics are also in the Railjack update as well. So if you do get to Railjack up update later and you've done this one, you'll understand the translation between uh, both of them. All right. But intrinsics are going to be spent a little bit later on trying to make us a bit stronger. So we will be doing that and um, we'll explain a bit more about that briefly. As of right now, we're just doing the very Paradox quest. So again, I want to get out of the quest so that I can go and guide you around the very itself. So a lot of this stuff, I'm just looking to go ahead and get done nice and quick. Again, if your uh, waypoint gets bugged at any point, feel free just to follow the direction that I go ahead and take. Okay. Sometimes it can happen. Whoops. Wait, no. Oh, no way. I jump. Do I jump on it? Okay. When can I jump on it? Oh. Okay, game. I was. Oh, my God. Clutch. Oh, I was so prepared. Don't worry. It's fine. Why is there a. Oh, okay. I think the oh right yeah that rabbit is always around never mind I just realized what it is I thought it was actually a bug where one of them spawned there oh fantastic so we are already here this is Teshin's cave but we'll kind of get more towards this a little bit later you're gonna have to know names of absolutely everything as well by the way okay so uh um can I skip this okay well before I skip it, what you're basically looking at here is if you are joining Warframe for the first time, you're kind of looking at um, the actual Warframes, the body suits of armor. Okay, that's what that is. Um, don't worry if you don't know the characters just yet or anything else like that. But what you're seeing here are the body suits of armor. So in episode one, you saw me basically select between Excalibur, Mag, or Vol. If you did not 
take that route in episode one and you took the Daviri path, this is your first time meeting these three. Okay, what could be cool for educational purposes is I could actually take a different Warframe to show you what it'd be like playing with a different Warframe because we've not covered other Warframes so far uh, in this series because um, I uh, just haven't had the time to go ahead and farm them out at the moment. So instead of running Excalibur, as we all recognize, I can either run Mag or Vol. So I think that'll be fun to go and show you what that would look like as well. So we're going to go and have a little talk here and catch up with everything. Now, as of right now, we're inside the game. Um, I'm going to move my camera so you can go and see this. We have this kind of, mm, I don't know how to go and call it, um, like sundial looking thing where you can basically change the sundial depending on your uh, actions or reactions, whatever you want to go and call it. So you kind of got like the sun, the light, the terror, the, the limbo, the neutral, whatever else you want to go and call it. And then the lure, the night or what could potentially be represented as negativity or evil i'm not actually too sure so again i'm not the biggest law guy when it comes towards it but what i can go and tell you at least from from what i'm aware of because nothing's actually changed anything so far is that none of these overly matter as much whether or not they'll matter way more down the line i'm currently unsure but if you want to keep it thematic so for example if you just want to be soul and be nice and sunlight and stuff like that at all times you can go ahead and do so or if you want to always be like darkness and lure you can always just take these options okay feel free to go and mess around with whatever you want to as of right now let's just go terra straight down the middle uh, that is mostly also just naming our rabbit, I believe. So I think we also just named the rabbit, if I remember that correctly. Uh, you can name the rabbit one of three different things, Soul, Terra, or Lua. Uh, on my main account, I named it Lua. On this account, I've now named the rabbit Terra. And over here, we have the Sun and Moon. Oh, god damn. This, this weapon is so cool. So, so cool. They're currently, they're the first iteration and the only rendition of dual Nakanas inside the game. So they're really, really cool. Um... Right, so these are the intrinsics. Like I said, you'll go and learn this stuff pretty pretty commonly, but you will go ahead and get combat opportunity endurance. I will give you a walk down what ones go ahead and max, what you should be maxing for, what to look into. Just bear, me, bear with me when we get that. But we got 20 intrinsics. So what we're going to go and do is literally just go ahead and invest that into here. But before we invest it, if you want to, you can right click it. See like this, or if you're on console, it should go and give you the command if you are on console. See where it says details on the right hand side. And you can scroll and see what you would get if you was to continue level this up. All right. But otherwise, just go ahead and uh, left click or fire whatever your button is. And we're going to go invest into it. Now, here's all of the other ones. Again, we'll cover this a little bit later. Let's just get the quest done for now. Okay. But I'll make sure that you understand what's going to take there. How to go ahead and farm for intrinsics. What you're doing with them, where you're going. You get the idea. So, this is defeating the Dax. This is just kind of getting you in towards the combat. Now, you can go look onto enemies. I'm not going to lie. I really don't like it, so I don't do it personally. Um, but otherwise, you're going to get introduced into kind of like the melee combat system. Uh, then you got your heavy strike. Just follow the commands that it tells you at the top here. Just going to go and break that. And then we're just going to block. Just a bit of an introduction towards uh, this right here. And then if you time it right, you can go and get a parry, which is nice. So you can go and get your parries on there as well. There you go. Very good. Can I get my executes or is it... So you can reflect projectiles as well if you just time this correctly. Wait for the full draw. So you see like, how many rings are there? It's two rings. When I see two rings, I count like half a second in my head. So just two rings. And then I normally just go ahead and time it. So it's up to you how you want to go and do that. But whatever works for you. Your third ability restores your health if you do get hit. We haven't so far. These ones, you cannot parry. So you have to time the dodge on them. You can see like a little kind of multiple circles in there as well. So you're going to be rolling as well. Each drifter has a power strike, um, which is going to be like a very special heavy attack. Um, so on Sun and Moon, I think we go ahead and throw electric projectiles out. Now, I actually have a video. Um, there actually are, as of right now, I think there's actually five weapons within the Daviri Paradox. I do actually have a video breaking down all five weapons if you are interested. I'll echo that again later anyways. But anyways, we're going to do this, which is our um, power spike right there. And whenever he does those, we need to go and shoot him. Okay. Whenever you go and see those like target crosshairs. So he does that. You just need to go ahead and shoot. Combat's pretty fluid in this, so you can just take your time. It's all nice. Oh. Uh, and then this one is just switching between targets right here. And just kind of getting that done. 
So if you time the parry and then go ahead and um, attack, like normal attack, what you can see is um, I can do like an execute. See this? And this will take a great amount of health off them. When they're on the ground as well, you'll also get a good amount of damage. So try to get in the habit of being reactive rather than proactive. So uh, just let them do all the hard work and you just react around what they're doing. It's very, very good. This is an Oro Worm. You'll learn a lot more about this later. Again, we'll be skipping cutscenes, forgive me, um, but we'll get over towards all of that. Right, so now we can fly. So if you do control, and then you can also go ahead and roll as well. Oh, I can't. But yes, you can fly next to the Oro Worm. Uh, you'll learn a bit more about this later, so do not worry. Uh, Oro Worms are more important in the spiral game mode, okay? That's the Daviri experience and the loan experience. Uh, where am I going from here? Cave will always move, like, no matter what. So if I let my hands go, Cave will always go and face a direction. And um, if you go ahead and roll, uh, or go ahead and, like, roll with Cave, they'll do, like, a spiral roll as well. And again, I'll be skipping any cutscenes. Please go ahead and watch your cutscenes. Like I said, feel free to just pause what I'm doing and catch up. You're thinking, is this real? Is a powerful dialogue to try and somewhat remember. Okay, just remember that. Because, oh my goodness. All right, that's why I say it's a bit of a... <laughs> a bit of a mind... Uh, a bit of a throw-off right here. Okay, so we're going to go down here, and now this is where we get to go and select one of the three Warframes. So this is, again, the true Warframe experience. Welcome to Warframe at this point. Again, if you're a new player, you'll be able to go and select between the three. So I'll give you a bit of a quick rundown about the three um, whenever I can select them. So this is where the hands that we got at the beginning pays off. So welcome back to this screen again. If you was here in episode one, you would see this screen. If you're not here in episode one and you're joining this for the first time and joining us for the first time, then this is selected between your three Warframes. Now, I went with Excalibur in my previous episodes, and that's the current Warframe that I'm starting off with. Um, but I will be selected between Maggot and Volt briefly. But let's just go ahead and break down what was Excalibur? What does he do? Again, for a lot of people who might be newer here, I'm just going to go and hide my webcam so you can see down there. Passes are always down here as well. He deals 10% increased damage and attacks 10% faster when wielding swords. So he thematically works better with sword play. From there onwards, slash and dash is just like a... I mostly use it for mobility and getting around, but otherwise it will chain your... Um, first ability towards multiple enemies if multiple enemies are inside the area you can chain one ability to hit multiple targets so it's just like a, a slash towards them and a dash towards them who would have thought it radio blind uses as aoe you can essentially stun the enemies and then they're actually opened up for execution so you can walk up towards them and then execute them which is really really good as well this will, well it's not so much execute it's called finisher um it will do a lot of damage if you want to go and use finisher damage on them but this is crowd control over here, we've got Radial Javelin. Uh, just imagine this as like an AoE around you that does an awful lot of damage uh, towards like enemies. If there's too many enemies overwhelming you and your weapons aren't doing enough damage, just go and press free and it'll do a, quite a bit more damage towards it as well. And then finally, we have Exalted Blade, which is like an Exalted Weapon. You'll hear Exalted Weapons throughout Warframe. Exalted Weapons are summoned weapons from Warframes. Not pseudo-Exalted, not to be confused with, but for now, just Exalted Weapons, okay? So there'll be a few Warframes that have Exalted Weapons that they can basically summon in, uh, conjure in, if you will. Imagine like a summoner in another game that conjures weapons. This is kind of like what the Warframe's doing as well. So that's his Exalted Blades. All right, so that is Excalibur, your, swords, your sword ship, your sword master, and so forth. Then we got Mag. Mag is uh, passive nearby items. Gravity. Oh my god, they need to change this. But this is fine. Um, <laughs> this passive unfortunately falls off a lot further late game. But uh, passive is uh, go ahead and picking up items around you, which is kind of nice. But um, she's all about magnet, uh, magnetizing and magnetic and controlling um, fields, if you will. So pull, as you can see, kind of like gravitation. Like you'll be able to pull them towards you, pull on enemies, manipulation, so forth. Um, so you're going to pull them towards you over this one, um, magnetize. You basically put like a bubble around them. If you shoot into the bubble, your weapon gets enhanced damage. A better way to go ahead and explain it. However, if you hold the ability, um, you basically turn into Neo from the Matrix. You know, when he kind of like, you know, when someone like shoots bullets at him and he does this and then all the bullets stop here and then he like sends the bullets back. Literally, literally literally okay 
Uh, up next, we then got uh, Polarize. Uh, this is basically like uh i say like strips if you will the plates enemy shields it doesn't really strip straight off the strip of the shields but it will go and hurt enemy shields and what will happen uh, and their armor as well um you have a way to go ahead and protect your own shields which is nice and shields in warframe are now more important than they ever used to be so shields are great to go ahead and have a uh, survivability uh, and on top of that um you'll basically get like these shards orbiting you what can happen is that if you pull uh if you like strip the shields or armor off people you create shards if you walk towards a magnetized bubble the shards will go into the bubble and um it will do damage to the enemy so you can actually sync these together okay and then finally we have something here called crush it basically lifts them up kind of like crushes them a, li a little bit and then kind of like throws them straight down to kind of the ground if you will um this is a way to uh, armor strip people uh it also does shield here as well which is also really nice um it's just overall a very very nice ability but we'll kind of get more to that like way later um as to why it's nice i don't think it actually sorry i don't know if it actually armor strips on uh, initial cast but maybe it does a bit later but forgive me uh, imagine this is more so like crowd control and damage in like one thing okay then finally up last we got vault vault down here passive uh grounded uh movement generates uh so basically if you just walk around in a quick circle you're slowly building up damage so vault can basically just build up to a thousand uh damage as well uh through generating movement so imagine like kinetic energy it's kind of like kinetic energy if you understand that motion uh basically builds up damage converts it to damage and then you go and hit something over here we have shock it just basically saps onto an enemy and i believe that might be able to chain uh yeah it does it goes and chains onto other enemies as well chain link is two there so just a quick zap a bit of electric damage and a bit of electric crowd control as well because when an enemy is uh procked with electric they will uh, kind of like shake if you will you know they're stunned speed over here gives you uh movement speed so if you want to go nice and quick meow, you can go ahead and take this as well uh, this will also give you a speed boost and a reload buff as well i believe it also does go ahead and that whole like speed multiplier with the reload thing i believe that also gives you increased um attack speed as well for your melee weapons could be a little bit wrong on that one but i'm pretty certain it does forgive me electric shields this is fantastic actually it's one of the best abilities in the game but we'll get to that way 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 later um electric shield the idea of it is you'll basically go ahead and put the uh uh, electric shield down if you shoot through the electric shields or if anything is basically shooting through the electric shields you get 200 percent uh critical multiplier added to whatever you're doing so basically shooting through the shield is wonderful for you it blocks projectiles it blocks hit scans uh, and you can also pick the shield up and move around with it freely and uh, now you just got like a barrier in front of you so that's also how that works and then finally he's got something called discharge and discharge is all about kind of stunning zapping and also kind of nuking enemies around you all right and that's the three warframes and that's the quicker breakdown of the three warframes feel free to take any of your choice let's play with mag let's play with mag okay so we're gonna go ahead and sink ourselves in towards mag i think i can skip all these cinematics and we're still inside teshin's cave here and now we're gonna go over towards this part which is either gonna take us to the undercroft or it's gonna take us back out to daviri so oh no it's just gonna take us how to move with all of this so uh, this is great because like i said there'll be a lot of things that i'm covering in today's episode that i've already covered in the first or second or third episode but hey it's still good knowledge to go and take anyways so you can double jump when you're in the air my advice to you as well is get in the habit of using aim glide so if you aim with your imagine there was a gun in my hands and i was aiming you could basically like slow yourself down see that where i'm gliding you'll see me do this a lot so right now it says that and like, i wouldn't make it but if i glided i could make it so you get like that little bit of extra distance don't be afraid to tap this as well if you just hold it i'm gonna do something right here if you just hold it it'll run out watch okay so like towards the end i was just losing a little bit whereas if i tap it i'm accelerating de-accelerating that's accelerating de-accelerating and uh get in the habit of doing that you'll see what i mean like way later inside the inside the game so right here we're gonna go and bullet jump you need to go ahead and crouch and then you go ahead and press space okay bullet jumping could be done in a few different ways so you can look straight down towards the ground and then bullet jump upwards like this or you could even look straight up and bullet jump upwards as well because obviously if you're trying to bullet jump down towards the ground there's nothing to bullet jump towards uh, but if you bullet jump like that see where i'm not exactly looking straight down but i'm looking in front of me a little bit it'll go in the direction that i'm looking okay but bullet jumping and then jump in as well so you can bullet jump you could then jump with it or you could jump and then double jump or you could jump and then bullet jump 
the idea is that you're basically getting like two jumps that's basically about it but i'll show you a way how to go and reset that okay then we're going to aim glide so it's going to teach you about aim gliding i already taught you that so that's fine and then we're going to go and bullet jump over this and a double jump now this one here move towards the wall whilst holding space if you just hold space it'll climb you up the wall now remember what i was saying about you could only basically go and like double jump twice look uh, i don't know if you can hear that okay same goes with bullet jump then double jump and i can't do anymore now you can actually reset this if you bullet jump into like a wall and you've used up your bullet jump because you can't bullet jump twice like i'm gonna try and bullet jump again that can't do it but i'm gonna bullet jump into a wall i'm gonna push myself off the wall and bullet jump again see this this is really fluid movement try to get yourself taught this if you can my goodness it's fantastic so we're just going to reset our movement like that and you'll end up kind of getting i'm a little bit slow because obviously the game is with new characters right now but you can end up doing like some really cool slide glides chain combos straight off walls stuff like that just mess about don't be afraid to hit commands and find out what they do okay a lot of people who join this game will fall in love with the movement but you won't be able to chain it together very efficiently. Don't worry, 6,000 hours in the game, sometimes it still happens to us, all right? Like, so uh, bullet jump, aim direction, and then uh, control space. So you just go straight up like that and then glide with it if you wanted to. This one's control direction. So you can go and do things like wall dash. So you can kind of, oh, sorry. You can go ahead and do things like um, wall dash and so forth. So you can just hold space here or tap space whenever you want to. So you want to fall down, you can tap space again. But it's just going to teach you, oh my goodness, I went way too high. It's just going to go ahead and teach you like how to, uh, you know, chain everything effectively. So I'm just going to chain my bullet jumps in between that. You don't have to. You can just space, 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 whatever works for you. Awesome. Anyways, so it's good that we covered that because, again, we'd have to cover it for a lot of new people. Where we are right now, this is called the Undercroft. But we'll learn a bit more about this uh, in a moment. Because uh, you'll get used to the Undercroft. I don't have a weapon these you see these remember these for later these are important wait can i yeah nice i could just bullet jump over it <laughs> so we're just gonna wait for Teshin's dialogue to go and tell us what to do and whilst he does that i'm gonna look <laughs> i'm gonna look for more rune marrow um you don't have to do this just uh i didn't realize it would actually give us rune marrow this early So I can break those just by going through them. So what we're doing here is we're learning the abilities of mag. So we can go and pull enemies towards us. And as you can see, that's what that would look like. We can kill them. We could go down here. This is what the magnetized bubble looks like. So, but unfortunately, I've got nothing else that I can really kind of do with that. He can hurt himself though. So that helps me. Then what I can go and do is use our third ability. So I strip out the armors and so forth. And, um... Oh, okay. You see the shard around me there? I was looking for the shards. See, it's kind of like floating. See it on the right? It's like a little glowy float thing. If I do this again. Uh, can you guys stop hiding? Wait, can I go? There you go. You see that? Okay, it's not really doing a great job of it, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, what you can do is pull them in, and then you can go and use your fourth. I didn't get a chance to go and use my fourth ability here. These things here called energy orbs. You do want these, they'll go ahead and give you energy back. All right? So you want to try and go and get some energy orbs. But I didn't get a chance to go and use our fourth ability there, because I was too busy, like, messing about. Forgive me. So we need to go and select a, a secondary weapon. We're going to go and pick between all of the weapons we have here. Akvasto, Pyrana, Lex. Oh, let's use Pyrana. Hell yeah. Pyrana is like a... Kind of like a... Um, Wait, am I thinking of Pyrana or am I thinking of something different? I was going to say, it's kind of like a sluggish kind of shotgun pellet. Yeah, no, it's it's, pe it's not slug, forgive me. It's a, I think it's, imagine it almost like a pellet shotgun, but it can go quite far as you can see here. So it's got a good amount of range. Uh, we got, oh my god, Tigress and Boltor um let's use tigress because okay so bolter is just kind of like an ar like an assault rifle i didn't really explain the rest of these lex is kind of like a hand cannon if you will like a desert eagle and then akvasto kind of dual um revolvers if you will right so uh bolter just kind of 
projectile related thing but tigress is actually interesting so if you click normally i do two shots however inside warframe this is called a duplex what we're going to do is if i hold my click so watch i shoot once and now i'm going to let go of my fire button see that i'm going to hold and let go now if i just tap it does both shots in one go so this is what we call a duplex So hold and let go, hold and let go. Then we have melee weapons over here. Uh, what we got? We got the Cronin and the Fragor. Fragor, absolutely big hammer modes. Bosh, there you go. All of that good stuff. But I'm going to go with the Cronin because, well, meta. And we're going to go pull those out. There you go. And we're just going to go ahead and get those down. Now, moving between like, like your weapons, like hold F, like don't be afraid to test between all of this stuff because I can shoot this one, then go straight to melee and on that one. So it's very, very fluid. Like the combat is extremely fluid in this game, all right? Extremely, extremely fluid. But I have seen worse. Sure. You want to tell me what's so special about the Tenno? This ain't so hard. From the other side, they command... From the other sides. We learn more about that as well. So at this point, Teshin's got uh, a suspicion that the Paradox is obviously um, another side of people going to go ahead and help us. Again, if you're a Titan player, you might have an idea. If you're a new player, you've got no idea what is happening right now. And yes, don't worry. As uh, nice as I think the very Paradox is, uh, my two cents, and I'm always going to say this because I still feel like that it would need a bit more polishing, in my opinion. Uh, I do not think that the very Paradox should be aimed towards new players. I've always said this. I don't think I'm going to budge my opinion off that. Maybe when it gets worked on a bit more and a bit more polished in the future, um, because I don't really feel like it represents the true Warframe. And I feel like there are just things in this that are just not explained. So hence why I'm doing an episode to go and explain a lot of stuff for you guys without hopefully spoiling the lore too much to let you guys still get those surprises and those wow factors and those wow moments a bit later in the game. So forgive me if at times I sound vague and I'm not going into it too much. Like, um, yes, there's Drifter and there's the other side. Uh, there's Drifter and there's Teshin and there's the other side. And you're like, but what is actually happening right now? Unfortunately, forgive me, all right? Um, we'll explain more about where we are right now uh, a little bit later, but you will kind of uh, learn more about this room later, okay? So we're going to enter Teshin's Cave again. So Teshin's Cave, now imagine this as like your relay hub for the Daviri Paradox. You'll basically be coming here um, whenever you want to go ahead and basically do anything when it comes to the Daviri Paradox, all right? Now, this is also going to introduce you to a bit of a roguelite system, which is going to be kind of cool because I'm kind of curious what we end up getting a bit later. But like the roguelite system, we'll have to explain a bit later because it hasn't kicked in just yet. And I'll explain what a roguelite system is as well if you don't know what a roguelite is. And it, there's no way to skip this dialogue for me, unfortunately. I just want to dive into everything. I was debating about doing this quest um, off stream, um, but I felt like it was still good maybe to do it on stream. I already have like my first... Oh, if you are wondering, if you are watching this and you want to see like my main account and my main initial reaction to all of this uh, and my first gameplay uh, version of this, I do actually have it on my YouTube as well. All right. Um... Okay, I can't get off. But you can also go ahead and watch that as well. So this is the second time for me doing this quest. So there are some things in here. Obviously, I want to go and speed up and just get done. Okay, am I done or do I still have to? Okay. How'd you end up here anyway? Through the eye of the storm. The eye of the storm is something that you'll hear quite a few times as well. And you'll hear something called voids um, and void-like. <sighs> bit harder to explain like what's going on there but uh you kind of get the idea um the same way you did void energy imagine void as magic so it's our easy way to kind of explain imagine void as like magic so warframe melee weapon warframe secondary weapon warframe primary weapon i've got all of those yeah so we're saving all of this stuff for the undercrofts 
against his false stacks. He's in a mood. See for yourself. He is in a mood. See for yourself. Okay, so I can't take my Warframe just yet. We're going to go straight into the Viri. Uh, the Prince of Fire. So what we're experiencing right now is one of the many moods of uh, Daviri Paradox. There's quite a few different moods. And can you remember when I first selected Daviri Paradox when I opened up the navigation and I clicked in the top right and I said there's Railjack and there's Daviri. I clicked on that and then I showed you just in the top right as well that um, uh, there were like moods. There was like spirals. That's just one of the many moods that basically changes the atmosphere of what's going around there. Now, there are some, it's more than just that. There are some other things that it will go and do for you. Um, but uh, just for now, imagine that as just the moods right now, okay? Some of the, some of these, like Amphitheater and Ark Harbor, some of these islands only appear during the moods, okay? So some moods will have them, some moods will not. Excuse me. So uh, I'm going to press my first ability just to go ahead and... Um, get my horse but otherwise we're kind of just fighting enemies wonder if we get decrees here actually i'm just gonna go for this guy because obviously he's doing that get rid of him use my spike if i can take your time with the combat because obviously a lot of things are going to be new for you But it's uh, pretty fluid. When he puts the shield up, just don't hit him or go behind him if you can. Because he'll swing it afterwards anyways. So we just killed those Dax Warriors, or what they're called. And we can go and unlock this chest. So now we're getting things called... We get the rewards and we get these things called Decrees. Now I'm just going to go and mute the game so I can actually explain Decrees and so forth. This is where the roguelike system starts to come in. So I'm going to press my third ability and just heal myself real quick. You don't need to do that. I just wanted to heal myself. But what we're going to go and do is open this up. Now, you ever play roguelike games? If you don't know what a roguelike game is, is, well, they're basically elements that can end up affecting the current game state or the mission or the activity or the run that you are currently doing. Basically, they're like RNG things. So there'll be cards or there'll be coins or there'll be something that you go ahead and select and ultimately it will change what's going to happen kind of next, if you will. So for example here, if I ended up taking this, my melee attacks now go ahead and get fire on them. If I take this, I go ahead and get uh, basically a better economy uh, towards my energy, uh, not just on my warframe bat and but uh, uh bat and on oh my god i can't talk but and on what am i saying but also on <laughs> my drifter as well and then this one over here is bomb the scenes matter so whenever i go in here headshot uh enemies will be afflicted with a 30 percent toxin this is also really nice this won't just affect my drifter it will also go and affect my warframe all of these and pretty much all of them will go ahead and affect your warframes and your drifters unless there's going to be more specific set ones that will say like drifter only or warframe only they could introduce that down the line we'll see what happens and uh sooner or later you're also going to get corrupted ones corrupted decrees they're coming out with colervo's update which again will be out probably sometime this month funnily enough so anyways i'm going to go and take bomber scenes malice i personally really like it it's one of my favorite ones to go and take because i like gunplay okay if you're newer to this channel or you're returning um i really like the gunplay okay so all we want to do is get over towards here. Don't worry about like running around too much and exploring everything. Let's just get ourselves out of the quest first. Uh, that cutscene is always a bit weird. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully they can make that smoother. But we're going into what is now the relay, if you will, towards the Undercroft. So as you can see, there's a bit of a countdown as it prepares everything and gets it ready. And now we're inside the Undercroft. Now we're back on our Warframe. This is Warframe, okay? So get used to kind of this gameplay and this game style. I've got survival. So I've got the next five minutes of just rambling right now. Um, survival, there's not much else I can really do here to go and speed things up. What is survival? Survival is you just go and kill enemies. Um, whenever you go and kill an enemy, there's a chance that they drop a cache like this. See that kind of marker there? If they drop that and I collect it, it increases my life support up there as well. If my life support does go ahead and fall to zero, it's technically mission failed. Or if I run out of revives, so they kill me too many times and I need to go ahead and revive myself um, too many times, then the mission is also over. So the idea is basically kill, survive, kill, survive, kill, survive. Hopefully you get the idea of that. There are these uh, capsules here and these capsules, I think, give you 20%. I can't quite remember how much a capsule gives you. 20, 25%? It's around that. Can't quite remember off the top of my head, so forgive me. 
But yeah, you can go ahead and pop those if you do get a little bit low. But otherwise, you can just mess about with your Warframe here. And so forth. And then you're basically good to go. I'll try and explain some other values here. Because I need to remember, this could be where some people are starting Warframe for the very first time. So I need to talk about this episode like you're starting Warframe for the very first time. I want to try and show you Overguards. So uh, this. So can you see that his health bar is a little bit different? If I look at like their health bars... Well, you're going to have different colored. So you see this like health bar. The color of that is just basically reds. But you see the color of this one's yellow. This means that they have armor over their health. Okay. That's what that means. They have armor over their health. If they have a yellow health bar. If they have a portion of blue health bar. If they have a portion of blue health bar. Like this. But it means that they have shields not over their health but they have shield kind of in front of their health okay so that's also how that works but if they have this kind of thing where it looks like it's an overlayer of like where the red is so you see it's got like extra layers towards it this is what we call overguards this basically means if i try and pull this enemy in with crowd control this enemy cannot be affected with crowd control the rest of them can they can be affected with crowd control but they could not so the idea is i need to shoot okay i killed them never mind the idea is I need to go ahead and remove the overguard by doing damage to them, and then I can crowd control them. Because see, all these enemies here, if I do this, I pick them all up, I slam them, and they're all dead. Now, if I see him and I do it here, I, funnily enough, you can see, like, because my ability does, like, ticks, if you will, um, I did enough ticks that it managed to go ahead and catch it at the end. But otherwise, hopefully you understand, if you do go and see it, that's what overguard is, all right? See if I can find another one. There he is. So if I do it here. See that? So he still didn't go in. But like, I can pull. And now I can pull him. See that? So you want to go in and remove that off them. Uh, any other things going to learn more so about this right now? Not really. I can go put a bubble up there. Shoot into the bubble. Show you what that looks like. So it'll kind of gravitize any kind of damage towards the center. Which is also really nice as well. Kill these guys, kill this guy, kill this guy. I've always been just surviving here for five minutes. A lot of these enemies are going to be nice and easy. Your weapons will be able to go and deal with them like with absolute ease, so don't worry about it. And any Warframe that you take here as well, whether it have been Excalibur, Vol, or Mag, uh, they're all going to do very well with this one. It's just a survival. It's just giving you five minutes to go ahead and learn how to loot, how to shoot, whatever it is that you want to go and do, and so forth. What you can go and do is a little kind of tip for you guys. If you press M... At least for if you're on keyboard, you press M. I'm not too sure what it is on console, so please bear with me. But basically, you can change the mini-map from the top left over towards this here. And uh, you'll see me do this an awful lot. is because my eyes are... They have to work less harder by me just looking to the right here than I do have to look all the way to the top left. So I can just go and see, see how the enemies are marked on the map here. I can just go ahead and kill these enemies by simply just looking at the map of where they're located. It's lovely jubbly. Kill those guys. Kill this dude. Yeah, mess about with your abilities. Run around. Oh, I wonder if I can... Hang on. Did they put any in here? So far, no. I know where all the spots of them are, so I'm just looking for them. It's so weird that they gave me some on the first initiation. There's actually... Oh, there's one there. I see it. These things here. These things here are called runic compacts. Whenever you go ahead and break them, they'll drop like this like little thing here. It's called rune marrow. This is like one of the only ways you're going to get rune marrow in the game. Um, whenever you're in the undercroft and fighting in the undercroft area. So basically, if you're doing Daviri content and you're using your Warframe in this kind of these areas here, this is called the undercroft, which basically means there's runic compacts around. And uh, you will want to go ahead and get yourself some of those um, resources. Because uh, they affect a lot of things later as well. Uh, if you're a returning player, this is one of the more important things for you to go ahead and try and grab if you can. All right. So anyways, we did stage two there. What we're doing is something called the spiral right now. Every stage that we go ahead and complete, we're also going ahead and ranking up and we're getting decrees. Um, I don't have any rerolls. You can can't, you can get rerolls a bit later. We'll explain that obviously when we get to it. So all I can go and do is just take what I'm taking right now. I'm going to take the critical hit because it's basically just extra damage here. Although proficient fire is kind of nice. Uh, and it had a two times on it as well, which means it's twice as strong. Um, 
but yeah uh so we'll kind of cover all of like the materials and everything i'll show you like what everything else is around here but again i'm gonna try and just focus on the spiral right now oh my god my cave is so slow <laughs> my cave is so slow right so i have the bombers things malice which means if i just headshot them here you see these like toxin procs kicking out there i got a bit lucky there which means um i can kind of just aoe them these will always drop like lamentus lamentus is a resource so if you're looking for lamentus you can get it from dax warriors which is really nice uh listening your suffering is really good to go and take as well nearby enemies are just cold so they're affected by cold which means it can slow them down so if you're looking oh if this is still too hard for you um don't worry about it it's no shame in that it doesn't matter if it's hard for you or not all right as long as you're having fun um but if this is hard for you listening your suffering is a good one to go and take it basically creates like an aura around you that slows down enemies which is really really good so we go back into the undercroft again normally whenever you do like spiral game modes the odds are you've got to go into the undercroft twice okay normally the odds are whether or not they change this in the future i don't know the very paradox is about how many months new right now maybe about a month and a half or something new but yeah okay so what we're doing here this is something called void floods now void floods first thing to go and pay attention to is right next to my warframe i have like this little crystal ball the idea is i want to go and fill this ball up and i'm going to be doing that by either like killing enemies and picking up these orbs here or i'm going to be running the rounds and collecting these orbs here now i don't know what is considered meta here but i'll put it this way whenever you do this game modes you just ignore enemies you can just run around and collect these and then what you want to go and do is hang on when i've got enough we're gonna fill up the uh the, the crystal ball thing next to us this is good because it'll teach you how to move a bit but i see when it's like really filled up like that see how it's nice and glowing what you want to go and do is stand next towards this and it's basically gonna charge it if you will okay so it's kind of like almost expanding this void gate right there boom there you go so then that's one done okay so uh, there will be five of these to go ahead and do a b c d and e um what you can go and do as well if i can find it because it was on my screen earlier i just gotta look for where it is now there is a bigger ball that floats around and if you are good with parkour over there you can open up the mini map as well see that like there it is See this like ball that I'm chasing on the minimap? This one gives you an awful lot of charges. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm just going to consume this. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll try and keep this as empty as I can. Right, now I'm going to go for that. These can be quite quick. When you're an endgame player, there's other ways to go and get these a little bit quicker. But you see that? Now look how much charge I got from that. I got a lot more charge from that. So you don't get those that often. If you look on the map now, there's none of them. But um, if you can get one of those, it will help speed up the process. So we're going to charge that one. So that's, that's B. There's a runic thing over there as well. I probably won't focus on that too much. At least I've told you guys about the runic things right now. Okay, very cool. We'll grab those ones. And go over, grab that. Yeah, I'm just kind of ignoring all of the enemies right now. I don't really care too much for them. I'll end up getting less from the enemies than what I could do if I was better with my movement here. As long as your movement is nice and crisp, you're going to be getting a good amount of return of these. Sometimes you see me like melee towards the ground um, because melee in towards the ground is quicker than falling. See, see how I fall there? Or I go up and I just melee to the ground. Sometimes you'll see me just melee to the ground. It's going to get me down a bit quicker, which is a good uh, kind of tip for you guys. these try to use my operator there god damn it and this will be the last one to go and close up okay and then that's going to basically be void flood in a nutshell all right so there's those orbs as well it's gonna be void flood in a nutshell go ahead and collect the orbs fill up your uh, capsule and then go ahead and just literally um charge up and insert whenever you're ready so we did that one we get another decree right now now, these decrees as well, do go and keep in mind, they won't stay on you absolutely forever. It's just whilst I'm still doing this considered event, if you will. So I got like six stages to go ahead and do all of this stuff. Um, 
Sure, we'll take Moral Boost. Moral Boost is really good, by the way. Um, what we're doing is uh, we're currently stage five out of six. So one, when I'm done with all of my stages and I and I leave this area, all of these decrees go. And then when I come back in, then I need to go and select new decrees again. All right. Um, can this be endless? Could you get all decrees in case you're wondering? Yes, you can. Um, but there's particular game modes that you need to go and take for that. So open the chest to defeat its guardian. We're going to get a Frax right here. See how it's nice and slowed because of what I took with the Lucinia suffering, which means you can see just how well I can affect it. Put the electric dot on it and then just full crowd control and off he goes. Team Rocket blasting off again. There you go. And we open up this one as well. Nourish and Terror is really good for what it's worth. Uh, I can also get Overguard. That's actually not that bad. There's just good survivability option here. So I'm going to go and take that since, you know, my character's not as strong as my uh, main character. So now we're just going to go and fly over here. Uh, we've got Purge the Darkened Areas of the Limnus. Limnus are like these shadow figures, if you will, that you're looking to take out. I know the volume's a bit low right now. Um, I can turn it up a bit more, but um, I'm just keeping it nice and low so you guys can still hear me at all times. So when I activate this, I've got to go to these areas on the mini map. So remember that mini map tip that I taught you? You can go ahead and do this as well, all right? So I'm just going to run in here. Again, if you look at the mini map here, you can always see where these guys are. Um, so just keep looking for the mini map to see where they are for you. It just saves you so much time of just like running around and trying to figure out where they could be. They, they're always marked. So there's one here. Just gotta be careful fighting on that. They're like little kind of ghost shadowy figures, if you will. Okay, my medic, my uh, heavy attack there kind of one-shot them. So a friendly reminder for you guys, if you use heavy attack, it looks like you can one-shot them a bit quicker. My light attack isn't one-shotting them. And we're going to open up the chest and we get our final decree right now. And oh, yes, uh, Tifal Torment. Sometimes you get these like rare decrees like this where they're like different colors. Tifal Torment is fantastic. Uh, status effects and so forth. And again, keep in mind, I've explained like status effects and everything inside some of the previous episodes. So, um. Loden's Rage is what's happening right now, as it's called. Assuming it's... Assuming we just leave here, right? There's the Aura Worm. Oh. Wants me to go down there. So down here we go. And we got another figure part. So we got one of the extra figure parts right now. We got a leg. Again, you collect the new figure parts. We'll kind of explain it a little bit later when we get towards the wrapping end part of the story. So um, that's considered the end of the spiral for now. Spirals are a little bit different when you complete the quest, but what you need to know for now is you want to go and do the six stages and then you'll be brought back here. Okay, we're going to put the other figure part together. Um, and it goes. So we're slowly building that figurine. So again... This is going to be a lot of like teaching what's going on. Pay attention to this stuff. Uh, I can't skip the cutscene, but that's fine. I'll give you a bit of a TLDR at the end. So there will be times where I'm talking over all of this stuff. So if you need to go and like pause or skip ahead or anything else like that, then feel free to go and do so. Wow, has it already been an hour? Oh my goodness. This went really quick. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> like I'm really enjoying myself right now. Okay, so... Actually got a little too close there. And then explain what's next. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to rest by the fire. As we go ahead and chill on out right now. Very Souls-like gameplay and kind of game feeling that you'll get to this. If you've played Souls-like games, things like Elden Ring and, and um, Dark Souls and so forth, you can see it's kind of inspired. Um, and then there's obviously roguelike elements within it as well. So you ever played, I don't know, Rogue Legacy or... Um, why can't I think of any... Uh, Slay the Spire or I can't seem to think of any roguelike games right now. <laughs> but there's loads of other games out there that are just roguelike games that um, can also do it. So as you can see, the 
uh, area is a bit different this time. We're in the Harbinger of Joy. Um, and you can see how peaceful this area is right now. It looks gorgeous. What is my textures? Oh my goodness. I'm Icarus. I've flown too close to the sun. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> oh no, oh no. You can't render me up there. Right, so we gotta go and do six stages again. So now we do not have our decrees on us. So those decrees that we selected earlier are now gone. Okay. Actually, I say that, but I have 40 Overguard right now. So actually, never mind. I think the decrees that we currently have still stay with us in the quest. Typically, this would be considered a new spiral. Typically, this would be considered a new spiral. So we'd actually have lost them. I guess we'll end up finding out. Yeah, because I had no proficient fighters. Deadly momentum's not going to be too bad. As long as I'm moving, get like a vault passive, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. So, look. You see here, it says one. So, I only have one decree now. So, yes. Typically, whenever you go ahead and end a spiral, you will end up um, losing all your decrees because you're done with the mission. So, you're going to rebuild it back up again. And you can say... It's cool. Some people might not like that, but the reason why it's nice is because if you care about build crafting or theory crafting or anything, you can select decrees and you can gamble decrees and it can be really, really nice for you. So for someone like me, I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's layers on top of all of the builds and everything else we work on when it comes towards Warframe. Okay. So far, I think I've uh, taught all of this pretty well. So we're going to get different missions here, I think. We'll probably get like exterminate, excavation, or defense. We got excavation. So I don't know if excavation was taught or how it teaches you excavation. I'm going to shut up. One sec. You must protect the excavators and keep them powered. Okay. Well, the idea... Okay. I want to go and see like how well they taught excavation. I saw a post where somebody was saying that they didn't know what to do during excavation. So the idea is that basically you've got to go and summon one of these excavators by walking close towards it, right? Um, it'll be marked on your map where you go towards. Once you then go and summon the excavator, the idea is that it will have health and power and shields and everything all displayed on your left where it says A up there. It's got all of the values that you need to know all about it, okay? Um, but what we're looking for is power carriers, Whenever the game wants to give us a power power carrier. So we're looking for a... It's going to be a Grenier faction. So this... These are called Corrupted right now. You'll learn more about like these enemies. There we go. You see this one? It's called Power Carrier. And on his back, he's got like this cell. When we kill him, it drops on the ground. So what we're going to go and do... We're going to pick up this cell. And whenever the excavator's hurt as well... What you can go and do is you can restore the excavator's shields by putting the power cell inside. All you got to do is walk next to it. Whenever you walk next to it, it will also give it 20% new power. Okay? So, so long as it's got power, it's going to continue to basically dig out Cryoritic, which is a resource. But we'll get more towards that a bit later as well. Okay? So, I'm going to be putting that in lovely jubbly off you go. So, all we need to go and do is basically defend it. And we're looking to go and put it in there. Now, again, this is going to be for, like, newer players and so forth. Um, so, remember I was talking about, like, their health bars? And I was saying, um, you know, if they have, like... If they look like this, you know, like, big, tanky, kind of yellow health bar, look like this, so forth. These are called the Grenier. This is, like, one of the main factions that you'll get used to fighting an awful lot inside this game, right? So, they're called the Grenier. These guys are just Dax. They're only attributed so far concurrently towards the very paradox these guys who have shields and look way different than what these guys do these are called corpus and that's another faction as well so we got grenier corpus dax so far and you'll meet a few other factions um but not within the very paradox so far so far at least within the quest you won't meet any others okay but i'm just gonna let you know these are grenier and so forth. so normally they would fight each other not so much the Dax, but normally Grenier and Corpus, they're not really friends anymore, if you will. Imagine it like that. Um, but when they're called Corrupted, so you see how it says the name Corrupted beforehand? Um, this is kind of like its own faction, if you will. So they're called Corrupted Grenier, Corrupted this, Corrupted that. So we're going to go and put this in. If you open up the map, you can see all those power cells that I've got left over here. So I'm going to head towards these ones. And then I'm just going to bank them in. 
I'm going to take this one. And then we're going to go and bank it in. And then we're going to go over here, take this one. That's going to be fine. These guys don't really do... Whoops. These guys don't... Whoops. These guys don't really do enough damage to, like, really worry about it. But when you start scaling content and whatnot, um, they could end up doing a lot more damage. So, yeah, it says it's currently full. Sometimes it will still accept some, though. But, like, it won't... When I put this in this now, it's not charging it any further. All it's doing is that it's refreshing its shields. Okay? So, once it says full as power, it's technically done. So, if I wanted to, I could just leave this one and I could start working on that one as well. So, you could you can have multiple excavators up at the same time. There's no issue or no worry about that. So, if you feel confident, thinking, uh, when this hits around, like, I don't know, 20 seconds, I don't think they do enough damage. So I'm pretty certain I can just walk away. Actually, do you know what? Just to prove a point, it's 30 seconds. I'm going to ignore that excavator completely. I'm now just going to start working on this one. If it does get too overloaded, I can just go ahead and run back towards it, kill a couple of enemies, and then run back over towards this one. But as you can see, to save myself time, I'm going to go ahead and juggle multiple excavators, okay? You do not have to do these one by one. You can go ahead and do multiple of them. Try and pay attention to how the enemy's damage is going. Look, the enemies still haven't even broke the shields right now. The enemies are doing absolutely no damage to that previous excavator, and I've just left it on its own. And that was with 30 seconds remaining. So you could go ahead and do that. Um, just try and pay easier said than done if you're a newer player it's gonna be very hard for you to gauge exactly how much damage they're doing for you to go ahead and juggle but don't be afraid to experiment um if you ever lose an excavator it's not mission over so you can you remember in survival when we did survival um survival if you run out of like air capsules you're you're, you're out you're out uh, if you uh, if you um if you lose an excavator, like if it blows up, what actually happens? It's fine. It just blows up. You just go get a new excavator. <laughs> the only way that you can lose an excavation mission is if you run out of revives. So whenever you die, you go down and then you have to consume a revive to get back up and fight again. Um... Not always in group play. In group play, other people can res you. In like solo play, if there's not a way to go ahead and res yourself, then it will consume an actual res. I know that sounds a bit maybe confusing. I don't know if that's something that I really need to break down and explain. Maybe it's something good for you guys to go ahead and remember. And if you play like group play or if you play in public, you'll see what I mean. Um, if you don't have a way to go ahead and look after yourself solo, um, you basically consume a revive. But if you're playing with other players and whatnot, you don't really consume a revive. They can revive you and then you can save your revives. But if no one gets you in time, then that's basically about it. Anyways. Free excavator's done. We're done with that. We got new decrees. Uh, critical roll, probably. Yeah, critical roll. So I go ahead and get critical every time I go ahead and do a roll. I get critical roll. That pops up there. 80% critical damage. It's not going to be too bad because I like it on Drifter. I don't like it on my Warframe's critical roll, but I do like critical roll on my Drifter. Right, Tams. Oh my goodness. Right, so what we want to go and do is on the map, we're looking for these kind of ship. And we're just going to push them towards the pen. That's literally it, okay? I'm going to go all the way over here because there's one on this bridge and there's one in front of the bridge. I'm not abandoning the objective. All right, so I'm pushing this one and that one. You can shoot them, don't worry. Like, it doesn't really do anything to them. Not animal cruelty, all right? Um, so I only need two of them. I can cut that one off. I'm just going to focus on these two. So you're basically just herding them up. That's Kovnik. I'm going to go and take some of that. There you go. And they're both in right now. Uh, so that's the tabs done. Uh, fleet Fluted is... Fleet Fluted? Fleet Footed is really, really funny. Um, if you stack up, the more decrees that you get, like every every individual... You see how like that's kind of two out of three decrees? Like two out of three there. So this would technically... If this is 10%, that would give me 20% there. And plus this one, that's now 30%. But if these were filled in, there's three there and there's three there. It'd be 60% that I could get from all of that, right? So if you get a lot of decrees, you can go really, really quick with Fleet Footed. It's kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. Doesn't feel great on the Warframes, but on Drifter, it feels amazing. Genuinely feels amazing. Right, we're going back into the Undercroft. So you guys are kind of getting used to the formula, what's going on here. I didn't actually realize how often they sent you back into the Undercroft into the Very Paradox uh, quest. So, exterminate or defense? 
probably defense if I've got this tile set. No, it's exterminate. So exterminate mission is very self-explanatory. What do you think we got to do? Yeah, you guessed it. We got to make friends with enemies. <laughs> we just got to kill them. Okay. So however you want to go about this, take your time. Get the kills. All right. Not much else to go in Spain here. Again, you're going to get... If you're a newer player right now, you should be getting used to kind of your movement. Um, I'm not saying that you've mastered it or anything. You're just getting a little bit more familiar about what you're looking for and where you're looking and so forth. And if you ever feel like that I'm going a bit too quick or if you ever feel like I've, I've touched on a subject but I didn't really kind of finish it and you would like me to finish more on a subject, um, please don't be afraid to go and like reach out and say, hey, do you know what? Could you go ahead and talk to me more about this? Um, how does this work? How does that work? Um, especially if you guys are kind of uh, newer to the channel. Um, in a very non-braggy way, um, I have over, coming into 7,000 hours in Warframe now. So I've been playing for quite a while. Um, and I've done pretty much nearly everything you can kind of do within the game. So I do enjoy the game. <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't be afraid to kind of reach out and be like, yeah, how do I do this? Or how's that done? And so forth. So I think the only Undercroft one that we've not seen so far is Defense. Uh, let's finish off Deadly Momentum. We get a times two here. So um, my Deadly Momentum was only one out of three, as you can see. But if I take this as a times two, which means I can get now a three out of three. So instead of it being 50% whenever I'm moving, I can now get 150% extra damage so long as i'm moving you can see that building up in the top right so if i put it there you can see a bit better see the top right there you go but when i stand still it slowly starts decaying so yeah deadly momentum is uh rewarding to like earlier game players absolutely i don't see any reason why i wouldn't take that i'm gonna take some of this still seller i'll explain more about these resources don't worry but just because it's there on my screen i'm just gonna grab a couple Right, so we're going to go and find a hidden chest. Thankfully, and normally, it kind of marks the hidden chest, which is kind of funny, but um, you're basically just looking for the hidden chest. If this one takes you a little bit longer, then feel free to go and pause and catch up. But uh, otherwise, we're going to go and do this. When you find hidden chests, they're going to have like this kind of, mm, I say like mini game, if you will, to go and open them. And I'll take this as slow as possible, but I'll show you everything you can do with it. So the idea is you're playing, imagine playing like osu right now oh this one's got infinite time normally these are timed okay imagine playing like osu the idea is when it goes across your like little circle thing here you're just going to click so I click 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 now you can slow it down by holding left or a or whatever the control is for you or if you're very quick at these types of things you can speed it up significantly so this is normal this is sped up so you can go ahead and speed it up until it gets to about here and then slow it down, and then speed it up, then slow it down, and then speed it up. You get the idea. Now, there is going to be another one of these, but it's clearly not going to show you right now. But what will happen is, one of those little circles that you see that you click on, you actually click hold, and it has like a tail behind it. So it kind of has like a line, and then it's got another circle. So it moves around like this. So you click on the first one, you hold it until it reaches the second one, and then you let go. It kind of works like that. Uh, in case we get to it later, or in case, you know, you guys are like, or... For any reason, I, I, I might as well just give it a, a, a shout out now. Uh, headshot, that's also going to be good as well. Again, I like playing with uh, my weapons, like my uh, primary and secondary and drifter weapons and so forth. So what we're going to do right now is energize the shrine. Uh, these are, oh, Tasuma. These are only found underground as well. Another resource that if you can go ahead and get some of them off, do go ahead and get them. Tasuma is really, really nice. This is aggregate. You'll get loads of this, so don't worry about that. Right, so we've got the Energize Shrines. Um, these can work in a few different ways, but this one's going to be a bit of a puzzle one. What's basically going to happen is you just need to go ahead and follow and shoot these, right? So we start here, we shoot that. That's then going to see the pulse goes to the left like that, see? So then I'm going to shoot this. That is then going to pulse to the right. So we go down here. And then we shoot this one. That's then going to go ahead and pulse down here to shoot this one. That's going to pulse going that direction through the wall. So we're going to wrap all the way around this wall. We're going to shoot that. It goes over here. We shoot this one. It goes back on ourselves. We shoot that one. That one is pulsating over here. So it's going to be this one. That one is pulsating over here. Here. There you go. This one's always like a little bit cheekily hidden. So we're going to shoot that one, and then that goes back to the Energize Shrine. And then we click on it. 
again, if if I did that too quick, or if you still need to go ahead and find it at your own pace, just take your own pace is what I'm trying to go and say. All right. Uh, at that point, I'll probably just take Duelist Advantage because it actually works really well on Drifter because of the Sirocco. Duelist Advantage is actually very, very nice, by the way. Your first shot after reload and deals 200% damage. But if you remember the Sirocco, if I go ahead and reload here, I only get one charge shot, which means I get a damage multiplier on top of that one charge shot. So, thematically, it always works really well with Drifter. So, I always like the, uh, I always like the Duelist Advantage whenever I'm doing, like, Drifter gameplay. Depends what I'm focusing on. Sometimes you'll focus on Drifter. Sometimes you'll focus on Warframes. It really just depends. Different game modes are going to be for different things. Wait, is it actually going to shoot that at me? No way. This is a mechanic that I'll teach you a bit later, but I'm going to see if I can just try and dodge that right now. <laughs> if you get too close to it, it kind of begins a mechanic. Um, you can't do anything with this until, I guess, towards the end of the quest. So we're gonna go down here now. Right, so now we got ourselves a another part of the figurines. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! So tell me, did Mathilla's joy wear off on you? So yeah, Mathilla's joy, Loden's rage. I think it's Bombastine's envy or something like that. You think I don't know what you're up to? Right, return back to the cave. Myself. Awesome. Right, so we go over here. We're going to place the other figurine part in there. We're slowly building right now. I think that's the other arm, right? So the only thing that we're currently missing right now is the head. So that gives us a rough idea of the progress. Our whole lives we run towards it. I can't quite skip any of this stuff right now. Um, not much going to talk about at this point. You skip ahead a little bit because <laughs> gives you a second to rest my voice. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if it's not too much going to ask of as of right now, if you guys are enjoying this, please go and hit the like button on the video. Uh, whether you guys are live right now, if you can hear me, hit the like button, please. Um, or if you guys are not live, um, uh, and you guys are just watching the VOD, um, I'd appreciate a like anyways, because I hope that these go ahead and help you. I wouldn't be surprised if this would probably be the more popular of the episodes, but I hope it does well. But again, I don't really mind if it doesn't. It's not the end of the world to me. But um, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully it still helps somebody out there. Because um, I know episode four is going to be a bit of a big one because we got all of the paradox quests to go ahead and cover. And again, do remember all of this stuff is will be timestamped as well. All right. So you can always go and skip ahead if you're looking for particular parts. Maybe you've already done the quest right now. Um, and you're like, why am I still watching this? Because I've already done the quest. That's fine. If you just look underneath, all of it will be timestamped um, when I'm finished uh, streaming this. It'll be just be up on the YouTube and uh, as a VOD. So you guys can just watch it whenever you want. All right. You can pause it, play it. You can share it. You can do whatever you want. And you can always let me know if there's something that I didn't cover. Um, but I should be able to go and cover everything. Right now, we're actually in the uh, dormer zone, is what we call this area. You hungry? Um, so it's kind of cool that we actually got access towards that, but we explain that a bit later as well. I know I'm not explaining everything as I go, but I'm going to be trying to explain the law side at the end, okay? Oh, I have got terrible allergies today as well, so forgive me. I'm... Uh, sniffing and snorting everywhere like it doesn't feel great my nose is burning up it's that time again it's that time it's that month what we're we in right now we're in june i completely forgot what month we were in but yeah we're in june right now so i'm getting the hay fever kind of kicking in my nose feels all tingly right so we're gonna go over here let's go is that the hespa that looks like the Hesper. We're going to head over here. Right, so... Who's this? Fear or Envy or... I'm assuming I just have to do another six spirals, right? 
Mm. So I guess it's just teaching you like all of the different spirals and stuff that you're doing here. So what's going to happen here is um, you're going to end up having these two, which are like the end ones in your chest there. And these are normally going to be timed. So you're basically going to end up shooting these and then following them. So if I shoot this one here, it's then going to pulse to this one here, which is then going to pulse to this one here, which is then going to pulse to that one there. Okay. And then that's going to be connected and done. And then the other one is going to be that one there with that one there. And then that one there with that one there. And then you're going to have that one. And then when you're all connected, so you're all good to go. And then that's the decrees again. So did we get anything good this time? We'll take Bombastines again. You'll get familiar with decrees over time. And you'll find which ones kind of suit you. So if you like melee, there's decrees for melee. If you like, uh, you know, headshot kind of builds, then there's ones for like headshot builds. And if you like spamming your abilities, then there's ones for your abilities. Really just depends on what it is that you're looking for when it comes to decrees. Right, so hope oh, please tell me this is the last two times I've got to do Undercroft because I really, really want to go ahead and break everything down for you guys. But I think also showing the quest at the same time is still going to be good educational purposes for people, especially if you guys are new. So forgive me if I'm a little bit antsy. Is this defense? No, we got Void Flood again. Now, you guys should remember Void Floods. Uh, we, talk, we just spoke about this one not that long ago and I already showed you what you want to go and do during it. So... Is there anybody in the live stream who has any questions about um, the very paradox so far? It's because I can take this opportunity to kind of explain it. If you guys want to, you can always go and skip ahead here because um, this part here um, is just going to be filler. I, you guys already know what you're doing with this Void Flood mission. So there's not much else I can really teach you about it. Uh, or you can just carry on watching. Use it as like a podcast or something or like a play along. Any staunches? There you go. Bank these as well. how good the music is oh actually there's no point me getting that one because i'll overfill it Grab this one at this point i'm just trying to do these as quick as i can questions or anything all right no worries guys no worries everyone's just chilling right now just use this part as like uh see how movement and stuff looks like for those newer players is that enough i think it actually might be you see how like i tap my uh ads button an awful lot for like gliding and sliding Okay, so at least we did that in a eh, decent-ish time. Five minutes, give or take. Uh, we'll take Critical Frost again. Alright, now I'm going to go and guide my reflection into the light. So, you did this one kind of earlier. You'll have an idea how to do this. What? This is not guiding my reflection. Into, this is an energy shrine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if that's a bug there. But that's not correct. I can get critical. 
and toxin done here, which is really nice. Oh, sorry, I can get, um, what's it called? Cold and toxin extra damage here because I got Bombastines and I have the critical frost. My gun. He'll die to toxin proc. Over here. Nice. I got Bombus theme proc there as well. Okay, now we guide a reflection. Okay, that was a bit weird. Um, so we're just going to lead it to here. And it, okay, that's unfortunate because normally on the chest one, you guide it to the light first and then you guide it to the chest. But the chest and the light were exactly on kind of like the same location. So it kind of just basically did all of the work for me. But normally you go to the light, then to the chest. Okay. The city is really good. So we'll be taking that. Other Undercrofts. Please tell me it's the last Undercroft. <laughs> I want to show you guys more Undercroft stuff, but I don't want to be showing you it inside the, the spiral. Okay, so what have we not seen so far? Defense, right? So there's five uh, things inside the, inside the Undercroft so far. This could be defense. No? It is, yeah. If it's this tile set, there's a chance for it to be defense. Defense. You can also get survival here. I'm pretty certain you can get everything here that's not excavation. If you see this one, I don't think you can get excavation here. It's not an excavation tile set. You could do exterminate here. You could do defense here. You could do survival, so forth. Anyways, what is defense? What are we doing with defense? So you can see there's a bit of a uh, defense target here, the golden cradle, if you will. All we want to go and do is basically protect it as well as we can uh, by simply just killing enemies. That is literally it. All you need to go and do, all right? Come on, come on. That is all you need to go ahead and do. Kill enemies, protect the defense, don't let them destroy it. If they go ahead and destroy this, it's game over, okay? So you lose uh, from here. Uh, if you die and you run out of revives again, like I said, that's also game over. But those are the two um, ways to fail defense. So obviously Warframes that can protect the defense right now. Anything that has like good AoEs that you can put down with like duration around them. So like um, you'll hear like Frost Snow Globe or like Limbo or like Korra. You'll hear some of these Warframes. Vorbin. They work really well when it comes to these kind of game modes. Because they're all kind of crowd control centered. So you can throw their abilities out. Uh, their abilities last with duration and they're kind of AoE. So they'll, they'll cover something around here. And it'll stop enemies from like trying to do damage to the uh, the thing. So Frost, Korra, Vorbin, Limbo, stuff like that. Just to name a couple, you know. Gara. Could really use uh, Mag's pull ability a bit more actually. Max portability is really good to just kind of group them in front of you, like so. Do not shout. You'll all be able to resolve is being tested. Do not falter. Prepare yourself. A fresh wave approaches. Yeah, I think that starter that was happening earlier is gone, which is nice. go and we got one more wave to go ahead to do here not too bad no time to rest already a new onslaught begins so this should be last wave right now and then we're out of defense 
There's not really many tips towards the fence right now. Just like I said, in any way that you can go to protect it, the better that it is. Any kind of big AoE abilities as well are always great. So if you can stand in the middle of enemies and use any kind of like AoE nuke ability. So in this case, if you use an Excalibur, use his third ability. If you use a Mag, use a fourth ability. Uh, if you use a Volt, use his fourth ability. Those kind of Warframes are going to have kind of decent-ish AoE around them. Wait, is it just this person now? Okay, so that should be done. Excellent. So that wasn't too bad. Not too painful, thankfully. Uh, and then we've done the Undercross on the Spiral. I don't know if I actually have to do all five moves of Spiral uh, inside the quest. Because if not, then we've got at least four more times to go into the Undercroft. Oh, sorry, there we go. But again, like I said, the reason why I want the quest over and done with uh, in, the, in the nicest way that I say it, it's a good quest. I just want it over and done with because uh, there's a lot more that I want to sit down and actually talk about and explain what is what, where is what, how to get what. You get the idea. All of the ins and outs that I think you guys really are going to want to know. How are you on that? How did, wait, how did he even get, oh wait, he fell out of this? <laughs> That's hilarious. So I got to, two decrees there as well. Like if uh, if I want to go and use them, I can. If I don't want to go and use them, you can always go and hold on to decrees. Uh, is there any reason saving them? Sometimes yes, because sometimes there are some decrees that you might not want if you're doing a particular set of testing. Um, if you're like me uh, <laughs> and you like to go and test particular things, then yes. Uh, if you're not like me and you don't care for that, then that doesn't matter. And that doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm getting this weird texture pack, texture thing hitting right now. Doesn't normally do that. These guys are kind of annoying that they can do that without line of sight. Hey, I was waiting for that. So you pick this up and we put it in. If you can get Bombastine's Malice to proc here on this one shot. I did, yeah, there you go. It's it's really strong, as you can see. Like, it'll just dot them and finish them off. If you want to learn, learn more about, like, elements inside the game, and you're like, well, what is, to uh, what is toxic and how does it work and so forth? I think it was my... Was it episode two that covered it? it might have been my episode two that covered it. It's either episode two or episode three, forgive me. Um, but it explains a lot more about, like, elements and also how to mod in Warframe. Like, what is modification? How can you make your build stronger? Uh, so forth and so forth. All right, there we go. Get the stun in there, then do these, go back, and then just finish off like this. Try to use as many dots as I can on them there with electric and with um, slash. So that should just be that two volt torment again. Really good. So who have we not seen so far? We saw Bombastine, we saw... Uh, oh, we haven't seen Lucinia, I don't think. Again, I'm not too sure where it takes us from here. I don't know if we do two more, because there's technically five different moods. Um, so I don't know if we actually cover all five here. Right, yeah, then we're going to where Bombastine technically is. And here's the last... This should be the head, right? Oh, no, this is the hands. Oh, okay, so we definitely got some more to do. What of that for a hand? So I think we at least got one more to do. Uh, I'm not too sure if that ties the aura worm to it. Uh, there are some plants and stuff that you can go and just kind of hit at the end if you want to. Uh, but again, I'll cover all of the resources. I'll cover literally everything to go ahead and do. 
punts about this quest. We just gotta go and get the quest done. It's a bit of a long quest, as you can see. It's not as long as one of the quests in this game. One of the quests in this game is extremely long. Oh my goodness, it goes on for a while. Right, so we put the hand on. So again, we still just need the head right now. Is there anything else he's missing? No, that's it. Okay, so it is officially the head. I didn't see the hand there. Nothing's worse than anger, right? So the story right now is, is obviously kind of showing you a bit more about this character that you're playing called the Drifter. And uh, you can obviously see there's like elements of him as well within the children that are being presented on the screen. But again, it's stuff that I'll be covering a little bit later. Forget, I keep forgetting how good the music is. Didn't see it coming, did you? Jeez! The turnarounds. What is happening here? And yes, he's using us. Again, make sure you're watching all of this stuff, okay? Make sure you're watching all of it. Don't you dare be skipping any of the cutscenes or any of the dialogue. Don't be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> All we gotta do is just survive here. We're just chilling. This part is quite good as well because this will explain you a bit more about like what's going on with the law of the Viri. And like I said, the Viri is gonna be a very big um, mind boggle, if you will. Oh, he fell off. He fell off. melee on them because this is she isn't even too hard yeah so this is all like just story towards what's going on right now So we come out through the portal. No, we don't. Just gonna be more story stuff. So they came to his bedside, one by one, and his firstborn knelt there. I'm curious. And the old man said, My child, my child, why be your eyes so dry? And the firstborn said, So that I might be strong. It just says survive, it doesn't say anything about killing them. <laughs> I just I'm just curious. Cuz they're not ranged, they're just p pure melee. I'm curious if I can just sit here. Now I'm testing. See, this this is the kind of stuff like if you do it this is the kind of stuff that I do end up just doing. I was like trying to think outside the box for things. I'm curious if I do have to kill him though. Right, I'd say around now is probably where it would have popped, no? So I'm going to fall down here. Let's see if we can kill a couple of them. And see if that's enough. No, it looks like this might just be based on how many enemies you go ahead and kill. I'll be bothered waiting for them now. I'm just going to shoot them instead. Yeah, okay. So, oh my god. What bug have I got going on right now? That does, yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't normally happen. Aren't these just like... Rinian Mannix. Why 
Keeping your eyes so dry. And his second child said, I shed no tears, Father, for I chose now to remember. Yeah, this is all just law stuff right now. And so unto him, the old man gave his family home. Okay, cool. We'll just sit here and then wait for them to turn up. So I have to kill. I would probably say that I would change that to from survive to kill personally. But survive is definitely misleading. In my opinion, they don't exactly hurt. Like, did they hurt? Yeah, no, I think they need to change this from survive to kill. Where's this guy? Wow, this guy's on for a while. <laughs> this guy's on for a while, boys. Okay, here we go. Uh, great rabbit scene. Oh. Okay, there we go. Right, okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, there you have that. Okay, this is good. So now we're flying over to Fractus Islands. Do I, do I have any decrees on me? No, I do not. Okay. I can't summon my horse here, which is a bit annoying because I could go a bit quicker with my horse. That would be very nice. So this is where it changes like all of the changing all of the um, moods right now. It's going. Why can't I? There we go. I was gonna say I can't switch to my Sirocco. Oh, that is so cool. Feels like I'm in developer mode. Like, <laughs> it really feels like I'm in developer mode right now, and I'm just switching elements on the fly. Or moods, I should say, on the fly. I really wish they wouldn't have um, lock onto enemies as R. We've seen three moods so far, right? We'll see the fourth one here. Fourth one. Any more enemies? No. That guy there. Why can't I summon Cave? <laughs> Please let me summon Cave. It'd be so much faster. <laughs> Get me over the bridge. Ah, uh, Dax Gladius, here he is. In all his glory. Oh, get smashed in the face, you idiot. 
Ah. Ah. The end. And Warframe's over. Wake up, Tenno. You'll get familiar to this voice as well over time, don't worry. It's like the only one part I can't explain. Loden's not happy. Gotta be a little bit patient with them, that's all. Be a little bit patient and you can go and take them down. Right, okay, so we've reached this part here. There's Teshin. Teshin. Again, make sure you're watching all of this stuff. Because it's a random skip from here. This is what I'm saying, make sure you watch all of it, okay? To save time on these kind of episodes, I am making sure I skip cutscenes. Otherwise, this is just so random what happens, okay? Right now, we are using an aura worm to take out other aura worms. Because why not? <laughs> because why not? And that's that as well. And I collided into them. I don't care how angry you get. You ah, come here. There we go. That'll do. Normally, whenever you're shooting uh, on the Aura one, but again, I'll, I'll explain all this stuff when we actually go ahead and get a bit further into this. But um, I'd say I'd normally start shooting when I enter at about 100 meters. So, like here, like 150, give or take. You stupid. Let's get the tail there instead. Let's kill that. A bit finicky to control for what it's worth. Right, that's the Unum Tower, or that's like an Unum Tower, I believe. So kind of surrounding it. Can't skip this just yet. Just like a snack. And there's Dominus Frax. So we're coming towards the end of the quest now, which is good. Oh, that was actually decent-ish timing. Shy of two hours. Decent-ish timing. I thought it was going to take me a, a closer to the three-hour mark. Because I thought I'd be teaching a bit more during it. But I've decided to kind of just hold that. Because I'm going to have to explain all of this stuff anyways. So... This is all really confusing. Like, again, explaining. I can imagine a new player doing this and being like, what is happening?
I'll get towards the end of this and you know, have a little okay. explanation. Is this real? There you go. There's the line that I told you to remember from the beginning. It's an important line. So Teshin's here. You did it. You took control. This is where a lot of people got confused. <laughs> I, always had I was one. <laughs> There you go. And that's you what it is. Said it. You gave it all back to him. Why? I guess it felt like a good trade. We believe the trades for Teshin's life because Teshin was killed and we got we gave Teshin his life back, but gave the power back to Frax. Okay, so we are now done with the quest of the very paradox, and this is where your true kind of Warframe experience is going to begin. So this goes back to the first episode that I did. In the first episode, you had a path to choose. That, yeah, it would have fought a big brain clock right now. In the first episode, you had a path to choose. The path that you could have chose would have been the normal path for the origin system or the, or the, the very path. I chose in episode one, the normal path, the origin system, so that in episode one, two, and three, I could teach you about Warframe. In episode four, I came to the Daviri, but for now, we're going to end up staying in Daviri. Ultimately, you can end up leaving and joining and leaving and joining. They're just different paths. But now I'm going to end up basically covering both paths completely. So from here onwards, for the rest of it, it's going to be covering uh, what can you do in Daviri? Where should you be farming it? What would I recommend? Where to get this? What is that? How does this work? So forth. Okay. So now we're going to be covering all of the, the actual intricacies and the, the mechanics and everything that you need to know about Daviri. Otherwise, the Daviri Paradox quest is done. The very Paradox is basically, imagine it like magic, if you will, but it is Drifter's World. Okay, so TLDR, long story short, is Drifter's World. He is the creator of the Daviri Paradox. And now that he's uh, created it and everything's now finished, um, it's kind of the void, this whole kind of space magic, if you will, that basically summoned it into existence. So he is the ruler of this world. I know that's confusing and it doesn't open up a lot of... It opens up answers... Well, it, it solves some answers, but it opens up a lot of questions. I'm not the law channel, so I can't go into it too, too much. But I know everything that you just kind of did there was, again, a mind whatever. But you get the idea. That's basically what's happened there. All right. So you are the creator of this world of the very paradox. Yet it exists, but it also doesn't exist. I know. I know. Jeez. I just... Go watch, go watch like a lore video on it if you want more kind of questions or so if you want more answers solved because again, I'm not going to overly go into it but hopefully that gives you more of an idea as to what actually happens. Anyways, from now, we're going to stay inside the Daviri Paradox. If you leave, you're going to my episode one, okay? This is my advice right here. If you leave this now, go to my... If you're a new player, make sure we get this correct. If you're a new player and you leave to the origin system, this is Warframe. Go to my episode one. Let me introduce you to the game. If you want to stay, you're still on episode four and we're continuing forwards. If you're a returning player, this is where you'll be as well. Okay. If you're also a new player that wants to stay here and do this kind of content, that's fine. All of this will still include you. So don't worry about it. It's only to those who want to leave who is new. Go to episode one. All right. Because I've already covered all of it. Now we stay. We're doing everything and anything the very path or the very paradox related now. Maybe things don't work out the way you thought. 
your life, your dreams, your self. No matter where you go, there you are. This loop you're in, maybe it's not so bad after all. It's not a trap or a habit or a sentence. It's just your life waiting for you to live it. Okay, cool. Hopefully, there we go. The very paradox complete, okay? So, let's go ahead and jump into it. The very paradox. What is the very paradox? Where do we go? What do we do here? What's the point of it? Like, what is this? Where is that? Where can I find this? A lot of things to go ahead and do right now. So, you have now finished the very paradox quest, okay? I don't know if it takes you exactly to where I am sitting here right now, but if it does, it would be with the Warframe that you selected. As for the weapons that you start off with, though, I'm pretty certain you won't get the ones that you just borrowed. Um, these are currently the, the weapons that I ended up selecting, which is, again, my episode one. Um, so let's go and walk you around where we are right now. So where actually are we? Right now, we're in something called the Dormer Zone. This is something that was tied towards the Angels of Zaraman update, which was way, way later if you're a returning player and you didn't hear of the Angels of Zaraman update. The Zaraman 10. Within Warframe, returning players, people have been playing for a while. I've got, I'm talking to two different people here. This is going to sound like I'm bipolar, but bear with me, all right? Because this will all make sense. If you're a returning player, Angels of Zaraman, Zaraman 10. Yes, it's in the game. Zaraman 10 is a very, very popular thing that literally every single Warframe player wants to kind of at least have some kind of foundation grasp of what is it. Zaraman 10 is where we originated from. So it's very, 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 uh, very, very important. Okay. We are in the dormer zone of the Zaraman 10 next to the Crystal Leaf and so forth. This is roughly where we are. If you're a new player right now, this is the dormer zone. Don't worry about the Angel of Zaraman. Don't worry about the Zaraman 10. Zaraman 10 is something that you'll learn more about as well. Again, it's where we originated from. So this is just like the dormer zone. This is going to be like your kind of base hub, if you will. Inside this area, you'll be able to go and like decorate it and all of these other things. Uh, I think you can just... Oh, as a new player, I don't have access to actually go out here. So this is kind of interesting. Oh, I didn't actually ever realize this. As a new player, you could not go out these doors. So normally this door is actually a lock and you could lock it and unlock it. Um, I can't unlock it, which means I can't go out there and explore the Zaraman 10. If you are a returning player and you've done Angels of Zaraman, you should be able to go and unlock this because you would recognize this. If you've not done Angels of Zaraman, you may have to go do that content and that quest line to go ahead and unlock this and unlock the rest of the Dormer Zone for you to go and see it. All right. Same goes with this, with the Vistagraph. Can't get in that door. Okay, so all you're going to see right now is this area here. This is all we're limited to. So from here, what we've got, we've got this little section here, which is Drifter Intrinsics. Over here, we got Akrathis, which is one of the traders. Over here, we got the Lost Islands of the Very Fragments. And then over here, we got the Mirror. Your Mirror is basically your arsenal. And you can select it on two different ways. You can either select it uh, with your straight up arsenal, which is going to be your Warframes, your loadouts. If you are a new player, um this is where you're going to be equipping what you want to go ahead and use on your kind of warframe if that makes sense you'll do this throughout the missions you'll learn how to rank things up you'll learn how to progress you'll learn how to do modification please go see my previous episodes because this covers it way more in depth all right and you'll learn more about your arsenal what is your arsenal how to get companions what are arc wings all of this good stuff it's all included inside the previous episodes all right so you've got plenty of time to go ahead and catch up and learn more about that if you're a returning player at this point and and if you're a new player what you want to go and know is this thing here as well is going to be the drifter intrinsics now you can access this inside teshin's cave but you can also access it access it here inside your dormer zone those are the two places that you can access the drifter intrinsics so Let's go ahead and give you a little bit of a rundown about the Drifter Intrinsics and what I would advise for you, okay? What I would advise for you. So, first of all, how do you get Drifter Intrinsics or how do you get Intrinsics? They're going to be done by completing particular objectives within the very paradox. This could be through three different formats. This could be either through the circuit, this could be through the very experience or through the loan experience. And they're within objectives within all of these. I know that's a lot to take in. You will see a little bit more about this a bit later. Imagine it as XP. As you're doing events, as you're doing stages, you are unlocking more and more and more intri intrinsics, okay? Just an easy way to understand that. Now, where would I go with intrinsics and what would I go and do? What do, what do all of these go ahead and do? Let's start off with combat. Now, first thing I would go ahead and do, and I kid you not, the first thing I would do is these only cost 20 at, at base level. So during the quest, 
you will automatically have to spec one into Raiden, so that would have cost you 20. The first thing I would do is literally put my first 20 into combat. The reason for that is because if you read it, each decree you acquire grants you plus 10% damage. I don't actually know how many decrees there, there currently are. I'll put, I'll put it this way. There's enough. You'll get over thousands of damage. There's enough. Okay, so definitely go ahead and take it. Um, sorry, not thousands, but there. Wait, is it close to thousands? No. It's got to be. It's hundreds. I definitely know it's hundreds. It'd be like over 500 five hundred percent damage or something. And I know it'll be over that. I don't actually know how many there are. I've never actually probably looked at it. But anyways, take this. Just trust me. Every single new decree that you select uh, and every rank up that you get is going to add you just more damage to what you're doing. Uh, so overall, there's no downside towards it. Now, in my opinion, I think combat is really good, but I think opportunity is the best one because this gives us more variation on what we're doing. But anyways, let's go ahead and go through them one by one. So combat. Combat is all about going to be like adding damage, making yourself stronger transference and so forth explaining transference is going to be a bit hard for a newer player explaining transference for a returning player should be a bit easier so anyways uh in the very restor uh, restor uh, restor restorative boosts movement speeds your third ability whenever you go ahead and pop it in you you also go and get a bit of movement speed from it it's good utility not overly needed but it's all right unlock transference surge to briefly uh, summon the warframe basically when you're in the daviri you're above you're not in the undercroft you're in daviri you're playing as the drifter you can basically build up these charges to bring your warframe in for a small amount of time so now you can play in the daviri paradox with your warframe for a little bit of time um, not overly needed as much. It's cool, but I don't really utilize it that that much personally. Um, probably good on some of like the mini bosses. And we might see it a bit more with the Calervo update, but as of right now, it is what it is. In Drifter, uh, sorry, in the very Drifter power a strike uh, is cooldown is reduced by 30. Uh, the power strike on Drifter is the melee weapons. Whenever you do the special heavy attacks of them, it's cool. It's 30% reduction. You could take it. Uh, Drifter ability cooldown reduction is by 20%. This is actually probably a little bit better. I like this mostly because I can get myself healing and stuff like that back. Smoke bombs, so forth. It's not too bad. The very the guiding hand ability will expose weak points on the enemies, and hit and a weak point will deal 300% damage. So three times damage on there. Um, significant. I would definitely go ahead and take this bad boy. This one's really, really good. It now turns your second ability from utility into an offense that basically exposes their weak points and now you can go ahead and critical hit their weak points, basically. Uh, in the very, well, it's, it's not, sorry, it's more like a weakness hit than a critical, but you understand what I'm saying. In the very weapon critical hit, sorry, I'm seeing this pop up a lot. You can't, you can't see it, but I can. Uh, in the very weapon critical hit chance increases by 20% additively as well. So as long as you're actually, um, can't tell if that is, is that just flat? Oh, I think it's actually just straight up flat. So your weapon critical hit chance is, is just an extra 20% is thrown on top of it, which is also just really nice. That's actually pretty good. Just take that, especially additive. So anything that has low critical, it bumps their low critical into higher critical. Is there any of these channels right now where people are not spamming stuff? Sorry, you guys can't see it, but all of these channels at the bottom are just spamming things and I can't stop them from spamming. Public chat, right? Am I right? Um, actually, I have to go and hide this part so you can see the last parts. Anyways, uh, over here, Drifter deals 25%. This is just an overall boost, not just towards your uh, Daviri, but also towards your um, overall origin system. So this is just going to be a really big boost. And then finally, overpowering abilities. He gets it whenever you use an ability, he gets 150% extra uh, damage uh, after uh, using the ability for three seconds. So combat is good and combat is essentially going to, going to continue boosting you. But for now, honestly, this rank one is more important than anything else in my eyes. And from rank one, I'd probably go into like maybe rank six and rank seven. They're pretty good. And then finish it off with just rank 10. Those are like the ones that I would lean towards, but it's entirely up to you. Okay. Up next, we got Raiden. Now Raiden, in my opinion, is actually really good if we can get to five. Right advice, very good. So we summon Kaif. So you need to go ahead and get this. So Kaif is your horse. You can rename uh, your horse a bit later, but this is Kaif. 
Um, increased resistance to being dismounted is just nice. So it's just a bit of a passive. And uh, when riding cape, you can go and use the stomp command. I don't really use it. It's up to you guys if you do go and use it. Fast travel across the map is actually kind of nice to go and get yourself around a bit quicker. This will save time down the line. Smooth path. This one here, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. If you're a bit newer to the game as well, this is probably the one I would actually grab first. Um, if you're looking for materials and so forth across the map, I would definitely go ahead and get this. I underrated this one because I understood where the materials were because I already played a lot. But when I actually ended up getting this way later, I was like, huh, if I was a new player, I would technically grab this. So here I am on a second account as a new player. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Um, steadfast as well. You can basically go and dismount and get overguard. So a bit of survivability. Um, reduces cooldown between dashes. Rank 7 is very good as well. Oh my goodness. It'll help speed you up and get across the map. Uh, rank 8, you can go and name your cave. You don't have to. Uh, rank 9, um... Oh, you can use cave and now open world. So if you play like Plains of Eidolon or if you play like um, Orb Valis, um, Fortuna, or if you play like uh, Heart of Deimos, um, if you play in those kind of areas, um, you can actually go and use cave across those areas as well. So cave goes open worlds. Uh, and then finally, you can go and drip, teleport to other drifters. So if you are playing public or if you are playing with friends, you can teleport straight to that friend. So that's basically how riding works. Riding, in my opinion, is pretty good. I would actually go and argue that I would get straight towards rank five and rank seven. I probably like my better ones to go ahead and get there. Well, four, five, and seven for this one. Combat, mostly one, but then, like I said, it goes down like six, seven are really good as well. Opportunity. Opportunity, I would say all of them. Like, honestly, just keep going. Opportunity is the roguelite system. Whenever you go ahead and enter the very paradox, you are not guaranteed what you want. Say it one more time. Whenever you go and enter the very paradox, you're not guaranteed what you want. It is a roguelike system. You won't always get the same Warframe. You won't always get the same weapons. They will always just be completely random about what's opportunity and what's being provided for you. This opportunity is going to help you get more options on the table to try and help you gear up. More so in a fashion that you want to be geared up in. I know that sounds a bit confusing, but that's just basically how it works. So decree selections offer one more. So instead of getting three decrees, you get four decrees, which is better. Gain two additional weapon choices in Citation. Now we get two extra weapons. Gain a first, uh, gain a free decree whenever you enter. So before I go straight into, um, as soon as I go into the portal and I start doing spiral or circuits, whatever, I get a free decree straight off the bat, which is really nice. Gain one additional Warframe that I can select from. So they're having three Warframes and I'll get four. 50% chance to go and receive rare decrees. Really nice because there are some very good rare decrees to go and get. Things like Twofold Torment, things like Vicious Barb, things like Close Contagion. These are really good decrees, but we'll break down decrees a bit later. Fresh Hand Discard uh, offers decrees. Uh, so basically, you can re-roll. That's basically how it works. So if there's decrees on your screen and you're like, I don't need any of these right now. Uh, maybe what I need is more damage. Uh, I'll re-roll. Or, oh no, actually, I don't need more damage. Maybe what I need is better um, utility and I need more efficiency. You can just hit re-roll and then select the decree that you want to. Down here, gain two additional Warframes. Uh, sorry, weapons. You get the idea. Gain an extra Warframe. So instead of having uh, four now, you now got five Warframes. Acrophis's stock now includes one Arcane per day. Uh, although I do like this, I find Pathos Clamps a little bit frustrating to go ahead and farm. But this is just my two cents. Um, so it basically includes Acrophis, um, who's the trader next to us. I'll, I'll trade her in a second. She now gets an Arcane. So it's another way to go and get the Arcanes. Me personally, my advice, wouldn't spend your uh, pathos clamps on her if they do change the currency or they do change the values in the future maybe but right now in my my two cents i really wouldn't do it i really wouldn't do it we'll get more to that when we go ahead and talk about incarnate weapons a bit later stranger in black now um this is gonna be fun i've got a video on this one this is basically the stalker if you're a newer player you don't know what that is if you're a returning player yes the stalker as in, like, you can play as the Stalker. I know it's weird. It's so weird. So, yes, this will actually unlock Stalker for you to go and play as. If you want to go and see a video on it, go towards my YouTube channel. I've got a video on the Stalker covering the abilities and what the Stalker is and the fact that you can play him. If you're a newer person to the game, you'll learn what the Stalker is, okay? So, don't worry. And then we got Endurance. In my opinion, Endurance isn't really that great, um, especially if you are a person who's been playing this game for a long time. Um, this is a bit weak, in my opinion. Um, but otherwise there's endurance as well. Me personally, I don't think the game is that hard that you need to go ahead and steer into endurance. I would honestly go ahead and focus on getting right into five, right into five. I'd get opportunity to eight, right in five, opportunity eight, combat 
seven. And then if you want to go and bring up some endurance, maybe five, basically five and 10, because five gives you the 50% additional max health for Drifter, which is nice. And 10 gives you the fatal damage. So you don't, you basically have like a cheat death, like escape death kind of thing. Um, sorry, we didn't actually talk about this one, but that's probably where I would see it across those. We'll go over it one more time, but each decree gives you uh, more health. This is nice as well, so it can go and look after you. This restores your health and energy fully, but sometimes you'll find yourself that when you're selecting decrees, you might just have health and energy fully. So it's okay, but it's good quality of life. Uh, one additional revive, again, for some people, you don't really die that often, so it's not really needed. But if you do find yourself dying, it's good. Parry grants 20%, uh, 25, uh, 25 health. If you use a melee a lot, this is nice to you. I don't use melee a lot, so it's not that nice to me. Uh, and then, like I said, this one's just max health for Drifter. This is actually pretty good. Uh, precise Barry gain uh, extra uh, charge for Transference. Again, the Transference is like all of this duration stuff over here as well. Transference is... If you're a returning player, you know what Transference is. If you're a new player, Transference is when you go from your uh, Tenno to your Warframe. Okay? Your Tenno to your Warframe. In this case, Drifter going into Drifter's Warframe, okay? And then back to Drifter. So that's what we call transference. <sighs> Anybody else who's like a veteran at the game or something like that is kind of like, eh, I think I explained that pretty well without like giving away too much, right? I think I did a good job. Um, This one is landing a headshot. You're going to get health back. This one is another revive. This one is just overall, it affects the, the system, which is really nice. And then this one down here is like I said, escape death. So what would I finish off with? Uh, me personally, this is what I would aim for. I would go to ride in five because you're going to need to go and get the materials and everything uh, on sides there. If not, try and get your ride into seven. So probably seven on this as well. Honestly, combat's looking at seven as well because that critical hit is also pretty good. And six is also really nice. So between six and seven on the combat, between uh, either five or seven on the ride in. Opportunity eight and no less. I'm not no less just go straight to eight keep keep ranking this up and endurance i'd probably say five if not then just go straight to ten that's that's roughly what i'm saying okay hopefully that gives you a bit of a rundown uh so for now uh, i like extra decree options because i'm gonna be doing this a lot but i also want to go and rank this up but i'm gonna go and take the decree options and i'm also gonna go and take this as well this way i've now got one in everything so i get extra um I get extra health whenever selecting decrees. I get extra damage whenever selecting decrees. I can summon my cave and I get four decree options instead of three. See, now I just have one in all of them. From there onwards though, I told you the numbers that I'm going to go for and that's what I'm going to go for. I'm, pro I'm going to prioritize Raiden. Well, actually for a player like me, maybe I don't need to prioritize Raiden as much, but I would honestly prioritize Raiden. Unless you are very good with like your memory and you know and you pay attention to where things are, you get the idea. Anyways, enough rambling. That's Drifter Intrinsics, all right? That's your breakdown. Over here, uh, 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 Akrathus. Sorry, I started. Akrathus. Akrathus is one of your traders. And I have a pretty good idea what you're up to. Oh, I wouldn't tell anyone. Not with your reputation. Okay. I think I'll wait for them to continue. Uh, but also, at this point in the video as well, if you guys are live or if you guys are watching through the video, we're two hours into it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please go and leave a like. Uh, on the video it would help me out a lot and they do go ahead and add up and i'll be very very thankful if you guys could go and support today's uh, stream and today's video um we are currently on episode four as well of the new player experience so if you missed anything previously all of my episodes have been time stamped so if you want to if you want specific topics for me to talk about you can go through all of the episodes and they're all at the bottom just underneath down here somewhere um, they'll all be time stamped and that way you can skip ahead or you can pause or you can listen to what i'm saying and if you feel like you need me to cover a topic more i can do that but um otherwise i'm just covering all of the basics in warframe okay so akrathos is literally one of your traders that you can go ahead and get right now i'll be honest as a newer player um the mods you can ignore because these are Riven mods. Uh, Riven mods are a way to enhance particular things way later. They're very specific mods, basically. So they only affect specific things. So like if I get a Riven mod, a pistol Riven mod, it's going to affect one particular pistol. So don't worry about these too much if you're a new player. 
Um, Arcanes, like how I said, um, I would actually go ahead and argue that the Pathos Clamps is a currency that I would save for all of the Incarnate weapons. So I probably wouldn't spend them on the Arcanes. I would actually hold them. And then finally, you've got the Miscellaneous. Um, this owl is pretty cool to go ahead and get, in my opinion. Uh, I would go ahead and get this, and I'll show you how it's going to do so. And then from there onwards, if I had to... This is probably, out of everything I see here, this is probably the more important thing out of everything I see on screen. That would be the only thing that I'd lean towards. But again, that's Pavos Clamps. But I, uh, even as a new player, I wouldn't spend Pavos Clamps on that, personally. N not me. Not me. You can, but not me. All right? I would honestly say, anytime you get Pavos Clamps, I'd hold on to it. Because uh, it's all of the, the incarnate weapons are just too good to not get. So inside this rotation, as you can see, they've got hours of when they rotate. As of right now, there's nothing in here overly that I would go ahead and grab. So uh, I will save all of my resources uh, and I'll start stacking up my resources until this is uh, something that I can benefit from a bit later. But anyways, Acrophis is the trader that you can go and trade all your resources to. Okay. Then we got the, the mirror over here. We did go and talk about that. Uh, like his drifter, you can change how your drifter looks as well. So if you want to go and change all of that, then that's fine. And then we got this thing over here, uh, which is called the Lost Islands of Daviri. These are fragments that you can find within Daviri. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this up on this. I don't know if I... Do I still have this? I do. Um, there's a Steam community thing, which will actually go ahead and walk you through where every single fragment is um, and where they are on the map and what's going to get from them. Now, in my opinion, the fragments are actually really good to go ahead and get. Um, because every fragment that you pick up gives you, I think it's five decrees, and then uh, sorry, five uh, drifter intrinsics. I can't quite remember. I think it's five drifter intrinsic. It might be more. It might be less. I'm not too sure. But either way, um, picking up these fragments, you can get yourself a good amount of uh, drifter intrinsics. Um, so. Uh, when I say like a good amount, it's a good amount to go ahead and rank up an entire tree. If I haven't tied this uh, document, I just spat everywhere, sorry. If I haven't tied this document yet to my timestamps, or not, not so much my timestamps, but inside my VODs, uh, the video description, if I've not put this in there yet and you would like this, remind me inside the comment section and I will tie it in there in case I happen to forget because I could go ahead and forget. But otherwise, this is a great place to find out where all of them are hidden. Uh, if you want to go search for them yourself, it's up to you. But honestly, acquiring them is a good amount of basically free intrinsics. They look like this. You see on the grounds? See like this thing here? They look like these. They will also make noise like wee wee. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. All right. They'll also make noise. And if you find them, pick them up. Uh, and then you can collect all of them. And what this does, it just gives you lore. This is basically lore. Okay. But ideally, you can benefit it from, from the free Drifter Intrinsics. So that is your Dormer Zone. That's all you need to go and know about everything inside here. Now let's go ahead and uh, enter this. So we are now on Daviri, and this is how it's going to be broken down. You are going to have three things on your screen. Let me go ahead and just move my camera for a second so you guys can actually see everything. Let's go and break down what we're looking at. Number one, top right, over here, Spiral, but envy so this basically means that this is the mood that's going on right now now again i spoke about this earlier the moods besides from changing how it as uh, aesthetically looks aesthetically looks and how the atmosphere is so if it's like rage it's all like stormy and ah and if it's like joy it's all peaceful and happy besides from the besides from the aesthetics looking different what does it actually do besides from that there's some islands that spawn so there's there's gonna there's only two islands in the game at the minute but there is going to be a third island uh prison island um we have an island called ark harbor if 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 and when i get in i'll show you um well when i get in i'll show you we got ark harbor we got uh amphitheater and we'll have calervo's prison islands um islands spawn depending on the mood um i think warframe wikipedia use you guys, obviously, we're in the new player experience, so I can talk to you guys. I've taught you about the Warframe Wikipedia. If you don't know much about the Warframe Wikipedia, uh, I would personally go ahead and utilize this website. Again, there might be people who are watching this episode for the very, very first time who are joining Warframe and starting with the Daviri Paradox. I would type in Daviri... Joy Spiral, is that what I'm looking for? Nope. I would type in Daviri. I'm just going to type in Daviri. And then 
I'm going to type in mood. I'm going to click on mood spirals. And... So here you go. Uh, the moods that can appear during Javiri are joy, anger, envy, sorrow, and fear. They last for 120 minutes, two hours each. Okay. It should say... About... Islands. I'm going to type in Ark Harbor. And hopefully... Okay, here we go. Ark Harbor, which is one of the islands, it only, it only spawns during joy, envy, and sorrow spirals. There you go, okay? Amphitheater spawns during joy, which is the same. Envy, which is the same. But instead of sorrow, it spawns in anger and fear. So there's more of a chance to get Amphitheater than there is Ark Harbor, right? That's how it kind of works. There'll be a third island coming out soon uh, called Kalervo. So what are we currently in? We're in Envy right now. I don't know why I've got that. Uh, we're in Envy right now. I'm going to have to reset those. <laughs> uh, we're in Envy right now. And Envy is going to um, cover... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Amphitheater and Ark Harbor. So I'm going to I'm gonna be able to see both of them in here as well. All right. Um, give me two seconds. Hi, guys. Wait, just two seconds to do something. <laughs> uh, I forgot that was I forgot that was up. So don't worry, I'm going to reset all of that. <laughs> <laughs> we're all good anyways so we've got all of that covered right now uh from there onwards we got the circuit we got the very experience and we got the uh the lone story as well okay between these three moods right now um oh not sorry not moods i'm distracted right now uh between these three uh play styles that we can go ahead and do uh, what are we going to go ahead and pick and what are we going to go ahead and choose um so we're going to go ahead and start off with um the Devere experience. The Devere experience is going to be everything and anything kind of related to running around and doing whatever you want, wherever you want, however you want. That's basically going to be the Devere experience. All right. Um, all right, two seconds. I'm just going to look for something real quick, see if it can explain it a little bit quicker than what I am. That's good. Yeah, we're good. There you go. Sorry. Uh, I was actually looking for saying it's all fine. So forgive me on that one. Right. Okay. So we got the Devere experience. The Devere experience is going to be a way to um, explore the world if you want to. So you're going to end up doing something called Spiral, um, but you're going to end up, if you just want to explore the very paradox, um, if you just want to go ahead and explore the very paradox and take your time with things, I would recommend the very experience. That is the very experience. The lone story is going to be not doing like side objectives and so forth. All right. The lone story is going to be focused purely on the spiral story, like purely on the spiral story. The spiral story is basically the aura worm, which is what we'll go and get to in a bit. And I'll show you what that is and how to do it and what we're doing and so forth. Okay. But we'll end up doing that. But that's going to be focused more so on the aura worm and obtaining things like Pavel's clamps and so forth. Um, ideally, you'll end up doing this one an awful lot. You won't do this one as often, but you can. Uh, and then we got something called the circuit. Now, the circuit, if I hide my camera here, the circuit right here is going to be uh, Warframes only. This is purely inside the Undercroft and only the Undercroft, okay? So, um, 
this is all going to be just fighting purely with your you won't really use your drifter you won't be above the world with your drifter either um this is going to be for particular things so let's go ahead and click on circuit just for now because i'm going to go and show you something real quick so when we go ahead and click on circuit we'll be presented with different paths now if you are a returning player uh, ask me later if you're a returning player you might know something called steel path if you don't know something called steel path that's fine but there is a steel path reward route that you can take as well which actually opens up something called incarnance right uh, as of right now if you're a new player or a returning player and you've not done steel path before then what you're going to do is you're going to click on circuit and you can choose one of three different warframes that cycle each and every kind of week right so in this case i can either pick hydroids i could pick mirage or i could pick limbo if I want to go and obtain any of these. Uh, I'm fairly certain these two are quest heavy. I'm pretty certain I get these guys in quest, do I not? Can't quite remember. I can't quite remember. Anyways, let's go for... Do you get Mirage or... I know you get their blueprints from quest. Where do I get Mirage's neuro optics and... I can't quite remember where I get them. Basically, this is an alternate way of farming for a Warframe if you don't want to farm for them during the uh, Origin path. So, Hydroid is tied to Earth, which is tied to the Earth. Uh, Hydroid, the Warframe, is tied to Earth, the planet. It's tied to a boss called Vehek. And the idea is that you would fight Vehek multiple times to go ahead and get neuro optics chassis systems and then you would buy the hydroid blueprint from the market and then you would build hydroid like that or you could go ahead and get hydroid by doing the circuit see what i'm saying so it kind of just depends on how you want to go and do it so um mirage limbo i can't quite remember how you get these anyways out of, all, out of these three frames i would personally pick mirage that's just my two cents I can't remember if Mirage was actually tied to a quest though, so it might be kind of a waste. But anyways, I want Mirage. What will happen here is it's now going to be uh, all of this uh, extra stuff that we're going to get. Okay, so I'm going to go and hide my camera again so you can see all of this. These are the rewards. So I can go and get Ivani, which is just a reward um, in the, the very paradox. Uh, I can get the neuro optics there. Rifle Scavenger, it's not great, but it gives yourself an aura right now. And if you don't have an aura in the game, this will be like one of the first ways for you to go and get an aura that isn't things like Nightwave and so forth. So this is still pretty good. An aura is an aura regardless. From there onwards, Seeking Force, it's not great. It's just punch through and shotguns. Uh, it's not exactly bad either. In early game, that might be going to be a bit helpful. It just gives me, imagine like a little bit of narrow lined AoE. Imagine it like that, but basically punch through. Penetration, if you will. Then I can go and get a chassis. From there onwards, I can get something called Pressured Magazine on reload. Fire rate for nine seconds. Not that great either, but again, it can go ahead and be niche usages. Uh, Total Eclipse, really good augment for her to go and get for what it's worth. Um, so I can basically apply my Eclipse ability towards my allies. And then finally, I get an Arcane here. I got Arcane Trickery, at least for what I'm doing with her and for what I have in mind on this account. This is absolutely horrendous. This doesn't help me. But if you've got things like Excalibur and so forth, and if you use his second ability and then finish out an enemy, me with his second ability there's a chance for you to basically become invisible and the percentage and the duration scale as you can see there so you would end up unlocking arcanes arcanes are things that you can tie to weapons you could tie to warframes imagine them as like passives that can honestly enhance a build quite significantly that's basically what arcanes are okay and then finally i get a blueprint so what will happen here is that i need to go ahead and begin the circuit and i would uh earn rewards or earn progress uh by doing missions inside the circuit all right uh, we will be doing this um maybe i should actually do this first now that i've kind of done this because then i can do the very experience in a second uh, i should have started with the very experience sorry I, I kind of did something earlier which threw me off um so yeah we'll go ahead and do circuit to start off with so let's go and click begin the circuit uh, normally you go and do circuit with like other players and so forth for now i'm going to go and just do circuit on my own so i can go and show you what it looks like from a solo perspective but if you can i'd recommend always trying to do them in public groups and again if you ever want to go and change yourself into a public oh you can't do it here if you ever want to change yourself into a public group just make sure you are set up for public there'll be like a little icon next to your name up here um and then just kind of hover over it and it'll say public or invite friends uh, solo just make sure it's on public which means when i click on this you'll be playing with other players who are also public my advice for you though if this is the first thing you're going to do don't 
put it public right now, okay? Um, take your time because it's going to be different. <laughs> you're you're going to need some time. If you play public, people are going to go a lot quicker. So when you come in towards this, um, and this is what you'll get used to, it's three random Warframes, right? And I on this account, I own Excalibur. So when I pick Excalibur up, it's just it just shows me Excalibur here. Here's the thing. I do not own Obron. See the symbol next to Obron? And I do not own Rhino. Here's the symbol next to Rhino. That symbol basically means that you do not own that. You are doing what we call like a lend or a borrow. So if you see that symbol, it's because you don't own it. All right. Um, so what you can go and do is, let's say um, I want to go and check uh, Obron. I could either take him or I could uh, click configure and see what he's got going for him. Still fiber, redirection, vitality. Okay, it's all pretty good. And then I can mess around with this Warframe. So if I've never played with this Warframe before, it's a free way for me to go ahead and try out. Will I like Ibrone? I've got no idea. Let's try him, right? Same goes with Rhino. I can mess around and try him as well. Now with Excalibur, uh, I do actually have mods on him, but it's nothing great right now. So even these borrowed mods, all of this stuff is borrowed. It's given over towards me, which is really, really nice. So I'm just going to equip all of the default mods for now which is way stronger than my other builds uh, that I'm slowly trying to bring up. Now that I've got my Warframe, I can move over here and then I need a weapon. So there's the MK1 Paris. Again, you can cycle through the configs. That's my current config that I was using throughout the star chart. But this one, serration, I got the damage. I got the multi-shot, another multi-shot. I got criticals. I got... Uh, I got no elements in here, which makes me a bit sad. I've just got straight puncture. I've got fire rate and I got status chance. Pretty good. This is going to be a pretty strong bow right now. Um, Redeemer and Lex. Okay, well, I mean, it is what it is. Redeemer is a gunblade uh, melee, if you will. And then I got the Lex as well. I just want to make sure the Lex is on the right build as well. So there you go. And then I've also got the Lex. Um, maybe the Braddon is actually a bit better than the bow here. I think I should actually go and take the Braddon. Yeah, I'm going to take the Braddon over the bow here. Um, now, as we're inside the Tessians uh, uh, area, this is the first time that we're kind of seeing it. So I'll give, give you a little bit of a walk down as to what's happening. Uh, on the left hand side over here, you have uh, Kaith. Um, if you want to go ahead and change how Kaith looks or what Kaith has got and so forth, there's a whole bunch of like cosmetics and things that you can go and buy with Platinum. Uh, and again, Platinum, if you're a newer player towards Warframe, uh, Platinum is a self-sustaining economy within Warframe. You can either spend real life money on it or you can trade other players for items that you have and they'll buy it off you uh, with uh, Platinum as well, okay? Um, something that you can go and do, just a little bit saucy, but you can jump over into Ken, uh, Cave's Den. You can hop over here and then you can go around to the back and you can see this DE symbol. And if you're after credits, you can just go and see credits, okay? Um, but if you are interested in that, there's like a little secret there. Uh, otherwise, um, otherwise, over here, this section is not implemented in just yet. But if you are after some um, Daviri materials, they're going to add this in. So you'll be able to harvest some Daviri materials a bit later. This comes out in the Clover update. So if you don't see it now, don't worry. But there will be some seeds and stuff here that you can go ahead and kind of harvest them. So there'll be like two per pot, I think. Um, but again, it's not out yet. So... We'll have to go and see until it comes out. The mirrors over here is how you go and customize yourself. Again, just remember that's how it's done. So the mirror is there. Uh, over here, these are all of the Drifter melees um, that you can look towards. And as you can see, uh, if they either locked straight behind Platinum uh, or you can go ahead and get them. But I can't quite remember. There you go. I need Pathos Clamps. 50 Pathos Clamps to go ahead and get the things or you can go and use platinum on it as well keep in mind it's a free to play game don't hate them for trying to charge a bit of platinum if it's a free way for them to go and just get a little bit of cheeky money they can go ahead and do so otherwise pathos clamps you'll need quite a few of them to go ahead and lock the weapons now before you go and get these weapons i'm going to say it right here right now feel free to go look at my um Feel free to go look at my YouTube. I have a video that breaks down all of the weapons that you can go and use. Um, so if you do want to go and have a little look towards them, you can go ahead and do so. All right. If you want to know which ones go ahead and run, what they look like on Drifter Combat uh, and what they look like on Warframe, uh, I have a video breaking all of those down. So feel free to go and look at them. Okay. As of right now, we're going to be using the Sun and Moon. There's a bit of a target dummy over there if you want to hit it. And then the only other things that you can go and see over here is this is also the Drifter Intrinsics, as I was saying later um, or earlier, sorry. You can go ahead and mess about with your Drifter Intrinsics here. 
And that's basically uh, the cave for now. So at least I gave you the rundown of everything in the cave and where to go and see it. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump in. So once you got all your items and you're good to go. We're going to go ahead and do the circuit game modes. And the circuit game mode is going to be focused on... Um, the circuit game mode is going to be focused on uh, Warframes, okay? So enemies are here. These are Xmas units. If you're seeing these for the first time, these enemies are um, more important for you to go ahead and kill. They're like bigger, harder enemies to go and fight. So right now, I have to do exterminate. So all I've got to go and do is just kill enemies right now, which is fine because that's nice and easy to go ahead and do. We're just going to go and kill the enemies. And um, what you can go and do whenever you're inside the circuit game mode, if you go ahead and run around, uh, so here's the materials that I was saying earlier. So you can go ahead and get something there called Rune Marrow. Rune Marrow is really good. So you want to try and look for those inside the Undercroft. But what you're also looking for is you can get something, uh, you can get these uh, Decree Fragments. There's one. You can get these Decree Fragments. If I be quiet and listen, if you listen... You hear that like really sharp ringing noise? I like how they flicked me into it. Thank you. They got like a really sharp kind of like shing kind of like noise, if you will. Um, if I stand over here. Hear that? That's a fragment. Um, if you get three of those fragments, you basically get a free decree. And you can get this during circuits. You get this once every stage or like mission that you go through so on this exterminate there'll be three of these i can get one decree so i'm just looking for where the last one is they're usually in set positions so you'll kind of start to realize where they are um, but there's a lot of different set positions and then i get myself a free decree right now so if i can i want to take that um on a new player it's gonna be a bit harder for me to go and set the decree because there's a lot of enemies that are going to keep charging at me uh, i don't want any of those uh, i'll take tactical positioning uh, for a bit of survivability. Those are not great right now. So anyways, we got those. So you'll be doing that. But the circuit game mode, guys, thankfully, I don't have to explain too, too much whilst I'm doing it, um, which is really, really good. Yeah, I don't have to explain too, too much about the circuit uh, game modes right now. Right, I'm just going to use my Excalibur to kill as many of these as I can. Let's go and kill here. So when I'm done with this, um, I can either continue the fight um, and it will change the game modes uh, or I can leave and guarantee the progress that I have with me. If you do fail during the circuit game modes, um, you won't be able to uh, actually redeem or guarantee your rewards, which is a bit unfortunate. two more enemies and we're done so again you can either continue fighting next one's gonna be excavation i've already got a hundred uh on my tier one we're gonna go ahead and just do one more of these but you'll get the idea i don't need to explain too too much about that as we've successfully done that mission i now get another decree so um persistent attrition is gonna be pretty good right now per uh, proficient fire is also gonna be pretty good so leaning towards those ones but we're gonna go with persistent attrition 
So I can hear sharp noise. So this one's over here. I normally then just drop off this and I check under there. There's not one there. Then I go into the back of the tree. Nothing there. I jump up here. There's nothing there. I look under here. There's nothing there. There is a runic compact there. So now I want to go onto the back of this area. Uh, it can normally be one down here. There isn't. I'd always recommend, whenever you can, look for the decrees early. So yeah, there's going to be one here. There's one there. And then the other one's going to be over here. Yeah, see. You'll start to learn the positions of them um, the more that you play it. Like I said, they are kind of just basically set positions. Uh, deadly momentum's not going to be too bad. Between the eyes isn't going to be too bad. We'll take deadly because um, it can also affect my melee as well. Whereas between the eyes, uh, I'd have to land a headshot. So thankfully, we've done all of this stuff before, but I'll just echo it again. Um, if you don't really know what you're looking for here, try and get the power cells from these guys. And you're just going to put it into the excavator. And then you just need to protect the excavator as much as you can. All right. Um, stack it up to full power. What is this guy doing? Stack it up to full power. Now that that's full, I'm basically done with that excavator. All I need to go and do now is make sure it doesn't die. These guys, be careful with them because they can hit you with magnetic procs and it can drain your energy, which is really annoying. I think any time I can use Excalibur's third ability here, actually probably not going to be that bad. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but in this scenario... Really not that bad. Oh, I just got hit with magnetic proc. That's just not what you want. So getting hit with these magnetic procs is making me lose my energy. And at the beginning of the game, this is so tough to lose this energy right now. I can leave that because it's two seconds until it's done. Oh, whoops. Uh, as I'm leaving it, I should always take a call with me. So that it saves me uh, another trip. Like this. Throw that in. Marking void treasure extraction site. Uh, 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 we got there. So these guys. Got enough power that hopefully there's a... Yeah, there we go. So say, I got enough power that I shouldn't have to go and run all the way back. The enemies will start trickling over here now. So I should just be able to kill him here instead. Okay, so that's all of the power I need. So then there's just one more to go and do. Since these enemies are doing like absolutely negative damage right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this one. And the way that I'm going to do that is by going back where I was over here. And there's no cells. <laughs> Wait, is there actually no cells here? Oh, god damn it. I can proc that one as well, it doesn't matter. Extractor in place. An extractor requires power. Uh, I'm just going to protect that real quick. Just because they broke the shields on it. Okay, so yeah, that's all done there. I can grab this one here. So all I need to go and do is basically protect this one and we are done. I need to get rid of this guy here. And then get rid of this guy because he's annoying. And uh, yeah, that's protected, so we're good. Fuck that. So the other excavator right now is drawing some enemies towards it. It's going to break and blow up uh, that one down there. That's D. Uh, we don't care if it breaks and blows up because it doesn't mean anything to us. Um, the good thing about it breaking and blowing up is that it's going to give us the uh, extra rewards um, that 
it could only give if it oh my god that was terrible timing for that actually oh yeah and i have this this is actually a pretty tough setup i'm not gonna lie to you Yeah, so we don't mind that one breaking. It's just this one. We don't want this one to break. It doesn't help that I've lost my energy again. And I'm probably going to end up dying. The excavator's got way more health than what I do. So you're seeing that I'm just basically falling back right now. And I don't mind if they hit the excavator here. I don't want the excavator... Okay. I don't want the excavator to get too low though. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm gonna go back over like this. And hopefully without me dying. So I just keep repositioning as much as I can. It should stay alive, but just on the off chance, I get another cell ready. Jump that in and just run through all of the enemies. So then that way I don't die, it doesn't die, and we're all good. So that will guarantee me now. Tier 1, inside the circuit progress, which is awesome. So this is how I would keep going. Keep fighting if you're surviving and you're doing a good job. If you want to go and leave and actually get your rewards, leave. Okay? That's all I need to explain for the circuit. Um, the circuit obviously has two different paths. It's got the normal path. The normal path is for Warframes um, and, and the like. The steel path is for Incarnan weapons. I can't show you Incarnan weapons right here, unfortunately, but I do have videos on my YouTube channel about the Incarnan weapons because they're really, really, really good. Oh, nice. I got all of this as well. That's pretty cool. Um, so if we go back over towards here and we click up back towards this, that was the circuit. So if I click here now, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. So I get my reward because I did my first. So I did two missions and I had enough uh, progress at the bottom down here I had enough progress here that I was basically good to go okay I was good to go anyways so uh, from here onwards I'm working through the rest of the circuit to go and get this so hopefully you guys understand what the circuit is and what you're doing the circuit on the left hand side is for your uh, Warframe gameplay only okay and you split into two different things it's split on normal circuit which is for your Warframes, one per week. And the uh, Steel Path circuit, which you would normally change here when you unlock Steel Path, um, is for um, your Incarnan weapons. And you can get two of those per week. All right. And that's how it works. So feel free to mess around with the circuit. Uh, Steel Path, for anybody that is wondering, if you're a newer player, like, what is a Steel Path? You said it a few times. How does that work? Like, where is it? Basically, you go around and you do every single node. See, like these? You go around, you unlock every single node on every single planet, and you unlock something basically called the Steel Path. The Steel Path is a much harder version of basically doing all this again. But again, you're like pushing your builds. It's all about just understanding your builds and so forth and stuff like that. So, anyways, up next, we've got the Daviri experience. So, let's go ahead and do this and explain a few things within the Daviri experience. Now, also, whenever this rotates, like the different spirals that you get here. Um, wait, what? I could have sworn that said something different. Um, whenever the uh, spirals also rotate, some of the warframes that I got to select from also rotated. So you remember how I previously inside there, I had Oberon, Rhino, and I had Excalibur. Well, if you successfully complete a mission and then extract and then come back into Teshin's Cave, your loadout will be different. So there you go. That proves it. So I've now got Vault, Excalibur, Rhino, okay? As a newer player, it will start to change into like different Warframes and different things that you're going to mess around with. Let's go and play around with Vault. I think Vault will actually work really well here with what I'm about to go and do. So I'm going to go and play with Vault and show you what Vault would look like as well as a Warframe. Uh, obviously, because we... Um, there you go, there's the Intrinsics. Because we obviously uh, ranked up as well, we can get extra uh, things here. So um, I'm going to go with the extra opportunity for now. Again, I've already broken all of this down earlier, so I, I told you what you guys should go ahead and run and where to go and run it and how to go and do it. But now this is the Davir experience, so we get to go ahead and run around and do whatever we want, whenever we want. But let's go ahead and show what that looks like. Let's go and choose our loadout. We'll go and take the uh, Braddon. We'll go ahead and take... Uh, we'll take the Skarna. And we'll take the Lex. Yeah, we'll take the Lex. 
So that's going to be my loadout. I'm all good to go. I'm all ready. Um, and whenever you are ready, we're going to go and jump in as well. All right. But like I said, these weapons and these warframes rotate um, when you've completed a mission and come out and then come back in. Or um, if the... Uh, the mood changes so let's say it was like anger and there's like 10 minutes left um you can see what options you have if you don't like your options you could just wait 10 minutes and then when anger rotates you could come back in and it's like envy and then envy will give you a different presentation presentation of these as well all right right so we are now in the very experience the very experience what is the very experience what are we doing what are we going now on the top left right there we got the six stages to go ahead and do that's the main part of the debris experience. However, and I'm not joking, and I can't stress this enough whenever I go and say this, the debris experience is for you to do whatever you want. So if you want to be like, look, I just want to explore this area. Like, I don't want to go and focus on things and whatever. I just, I just want to have some fun. That's all I want to go and do. Sure, go have some fun. This is the area to go now have some fun. You want to go and fly around and collect things and do whatever and shoot stuff and see what all of this area is like. And maybe you can go up here and I can show you this right now. See that? Remember those that I was talking about? The fragments? Collect it. I get five intrinsics. Get the idea? And that's just basically like how it works. I, I've actually remembered where pretty much majority of these are now, which is nice because I can just collect them on this character. Um, so you can take all of this time to explore the world of the Viri. All right. So do whatever you want to go ahead and do. But let's go ahead and give you some ideas of what I would go and do and what I'm looking to go ahead and do. So... Um, Yes, you can go ahead and do the spiral, but that's probably not, not what you're here for. If you're here, you're probably here to go and farm intrinsics, um, or you're probably here to go and get some resources. So some resources that some people are going to be after, um, let's go ahead and throw some of them out, the more rare ones. Can you see this stuff floating around in the air here? So like here, I have to get a bit closer. So it's right next to me there, see that? If you look for this plant here, it's called Sun Sylph. Um, if you shoot the plant... It'll break. And you see these things? They're called Sylph Cellar. You'll need quite a few of these as well. Um, the plant uh, will put some of them up in the air. So you're actually looking for like these glows. And then just use your... Uh, don't feel like you've got a turn. Use your, like, your, your directional button to go ahead and get these. Don't use like WASD or whatever. You can use W or if you want it to. But then I use my mouse to move my cave. Because it's a lot easier that way. Um, but getting to like Sylph Cellar, you'll need quite a few of those. Go ahead and get it. Kovnik are trees that look like this. Uh, so you can go ahead and grab those. Um, the more exclusive ones uh, are going to be on areas like... Let's go over to Amphitheater. So I can show you. This is one of the islands right now. So let's go over to Amphitheater. Um, Amphitheater has got things like Ivani, which is a resource that you also uh, will need a little bit of if you want to know what it looks like. We can go right here. That's uh, another fragment. I just want to go and take that real quick. Any kind of intrinsics I can go and take right now, I will be taking it. So I'm just looking for Ivani. There's some. Oh no, that's Draku. Ivani as a resource, like I said, is... I'll let you explore that, like that animal and what happened there. I don't want to do everything for you guys, but I do want to go and give you a bit of a rundown of like what's going on. Why can I not find a Vanny? Uh, it is normally along the back. There's a Sun Sylph there, which means there's going to be some in the air. Okay, maybe if Vanny's not on this. No, I'm like confident if Vanny's on this island. There is. Oh my goodness. I was going to say, that took so long to find. Oh, please don't hit me. Oh. Nothing worse than trying to show people things and you just get absolutely bombarded by enemies whilst you're like trying to explain things and whatnot. It doesn't matter what game it is. Do you know what I mean? There's just nothing worse than it. It's so infuriating. So I'll show you the resource in a second. So when you kill a party like that as well, you can also go and get yourself a decree, which is also nice. And then you can choose whichever one that you want to. 
Uh, for now, we can go ahead and just take Smoldering Strike because my melees are not really that great. But Ivani, this is a resource as well that you'll need quite a fair bit of. Ivani can only be found on the islands at this point. So things like Amphitheater, things like Ark Harbor. You can also get it inside the circuit as well as like a bit of a resource. So you can always go ahead and do that. But you do want to go and get yourself some of those as well. All right. Um, there are things like this right here, which is uh, what we go ahead and call more fishing. Um, you could do this with like multiple players as well, which helps speeds it up. But let's go ahead and have a little look at more fishing right now. You become the fish. So you're in here and you're basically looking for other fish to go ahead and chomp. If you fire, you can chomp like this. And if you um, jump, I think you... Uh, you dash towards uh, fish as well at the top there you'll see like a bit of a bar that's slowly decreasing that's my time as the fish right now and underneath that bar you'll see that there's like little kind of capsules or so forth like little uh, things that i'm kind of working up and building so this next fish i'm going to be done so let's go ahead and grab that and this means that this is how you get your rewards right so as you can go and see there i got my rewards i got a rare decree as well which is really really nice and then i got things like Ariet scales. I got things like pebbles. Oh, I actually got, I actually got one of the small fish to have, which is interesting. You don't get those that often. I also got more fangs as well, which is also good. And like I said, so if you're after Ariet scales, uh, pebbles, or more fangs, you basically go ahead and do this. If you go in there with four players, all fishing, every fish that you guys catch will ultimately increase that uh, that bar that I was like building up for like, remember, um, not the bar that there was increasing, the one underneath it. I was building that up. Um, four players will build that up a lot, lot quicker. So it's actually recommended if you want to go and do a fishing session and you got a few friends and whatnot or clan members, go and get, get them in here. If you do like an hour of this, you will gain so much from it that honestly, you won't have to do it for quite a while, like genuinely. So if you want to go and get this done and out of the way, you can do that. If you want to have fun with it, go have fun with it. All right, but that's more fishing in case you're wondering uh, what more fishing is. There are other things that you can go and do as well. You can go and do these shalzins if you're interested. Um, Oh, I have to go and... Go away, please. All right, does that work now? Yeah. You go and do a Shalzins as well. There's like normal difficulty, then there's hard difficulty, and then the idea is that you would... I'm not very good at these, so please don't expect me to. But you'll basically go ahead and... press the buttons accordingly. Um, and then when you've done this, you will It'll do. <laughs> uh, when you've done this and if you get like a tick saying that you've done it, um, you can actually go ahead and not only get decrees from doing it, um, but if you want to go and get one of the Shalzin skins, if you go around on the map and do all of the Shalzins, you can actually go ahead and get a Shalzin skin from doing all of the hard difficulty ones. If you do the hard difficulty one and it's got a tick, uh, the normal difficulty one is also done as well, which means I, I won't, if I don't want to, I don't ever have to do that again. Okay, not that one but I want to go do all of the other ones on the map, all right? So the ones that are on the islands, like anything that's on Amphitheater and anything that's on Ark Harbor, you basically really want to go and get those, all right? This is a chest. All right, we just got to go and kill this dude. It's so we get the uh, power spike off and he's dead. I open that up and we get more decree. And as you see, the decrees are slowly building up as well, which is also really nice. So I could do Venomous Touch since I'm going melee right now. So if I wanted to go for like more of a melee build, uh, this is going to be good. I inflict the status. I go and get health for my Drifter. That's going to be really nice. Uh, Rising Agony, critical melee. So there we go. So right now I've got like a whole melee set up. Smoldering, Venomous, Nourishing, Rising. So I can go for like a melee build rather than a whatever builds. So anyways, explore the amphitheater. You can go in and get more and more things from here. So I'm going to give you another one, another location, another one. Like there's another one here. If you're looking for another fragment, I'm going to leave that for you to go ahead and get the rest of the amphitheater fragments, okay? But I've shown you where a couple of them are. Take your time, go explore. They're pretty fun to go ahead and do. Honestly, they're quite easy to do without a guide um, for what it's worth. Um, but if you do want a guide, it will help. Uh, the other island that I'm going to show you is the Ark Arbor. 
the Ark Harbor as well is also an exclusive island. You won't see it as often. The Amphitheater is in four out of five moons. The Ark Harbor is in out three out of five moons. And then also, like I said, there will be another island somewhere, uh, which will be Calervo's Islands, the Prison Islands. And that will contain a new Warframe for us to go ahead and slowly get our hands on. And uh, better believe I'll have a video on Calervo, all right? So if you are interested in that, uh, there will be a video on Calervo. Anyways, we'll go over to Ark Harbor. Ark Harbor holds like one of the bigger kind of puzzle secret things, which is really cool. Um, but I'll kind of show you just a little bit of it. But uh, I do have a full video breakdown on this. So if you want to go and see this, I'm not going to go ahead and cover it fully here. But I'm going to show you something that is kind of cool. Um, if I go ahead and jump off here and I look underneath, if I fly towards this section here, look here. So this is all sealed off right now and there's an owl in there and there's loads of symbols that you can go ahead and see right this is a puzzle right you can do this every time that the archive is here um and uh, if you want to go ahead and reset it you need to like leave and then come back right but what you can go and do is you see this here i can disable the security oh so that's the hang on that one's actually kind of important so we disable the security by clicking look at this one i got click hold let go that's the one that I was on about earlier. Click, hold, let go. It's got like a tail on it. So it's click, hold, let go. If you go down here, that's a Tosoma extract, which is really good. You only find those in caves. You'll see that I've now opened something up and this might hold some secrets to what you're looking to do. Question is, what do we do from here? Who knows? Go check out my video if you are interested. It's the Daviri Paradox, how to complete owl videos, all of the owl puzzles, all right? But this holds the owl puzzle to this area. You can also find the trader, I believe, in this area as well. So if you want to find Acrophis in game, she can also just be here to trade. Interesting meeting. So if you want to go ahead and browse where's here and see what she currently has, rather than going back to the Dormer Zone or finishing the Spiral, you can go ahead and see what she has there, okay? So there's that as well. Um, is there anything else that I need to go ahead and explain over here? No, just the one thing that I will go ahead and, and mostly talk about right now, which in my opinion is quite important. Let's say that you want to roam around here and you're like, I want to go and farm uh, for intrinsics. What's the best way to farm for intrinsics? Now, in case you don't know, the very paradox scales with players. What I mean by that is the owl puzzles require or want to require more people to go ahead and do them. I know you haven't seen the owl puzzles. I'll show you that in a second. Um, that was one of them back there. Uh, but the owl puzzles require like more people to go and get involved. The enemies get tankier, so they want more people to go and fight. Uh, it starts to scale an awful lot. But basically what you want to go and do is you want to do the very paradox in a group of four. And you want the group of four people to just run off and go do everything. Because anytime that anybody completes basically like any event... So if I go ahead and find a chest, kill the guards, guard in the chest, I will get a decree. As I get a decree, I also get intrinsics as well. So basically, the more events, the more things that you go out there and do, the more uh, the more intrinsics you guys are getting. If you're looking to farm the very paradox, farm it in a group. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys, right? If you're want wanting to farm intrinsics, just go run around. Go kill enemies, go loot chests, go do puzzles, go do, okay? Just keep doing that and you will build up your intrinsics really, really fast. If you do it solo, it'll take a little bit more time. Still completely doable in no way, shape or form. But yes, it scales very well with players. Personally, I actually like how well it does scale with players. Uh, let's see if I can find... Um, I did see an owl puzzle earlier, but I was just going to look for... Uh, an owl puzzle, if I could find one. See if I can find anything here to go and show you. Uh, there is also Comey. I don't know if I want to... Do I want to show you guys Comey? I can show you guys Comey, because this is also interesting as well. Probably looking for something very, very particular. Once you see it, it stands out like a sore thumb though. So I know exactly what I'm looking for. It's just whether or not it will spawn. If 
can get one here, but it's not here either. There's plenty of like materials around here as well. These Kyrix dolls, these Sagan wells. You want to go ahead and break this stuff to go ahead and get some extra materials. So take your time just kind of like farming things around. By the way, is there like literally any questions as well inside the live chat? Um, if there's anything that you guys want me to go ahead and like explain whilst I'm here. Because otherwise the very experience is mostly I'm just going to go ahead and show the uh, the spiral. And then that's basically about it. It's just exploring. Um, so long as I showed you where your vanny was, where sun sills were, how to do the puzzles. I already have a guide on that anyways. But I'm going to kind of show you them if I can. That's just a chest where I could get a decree and some intrinsics if I did it. I'm also looking for a Comey board. I believe a Comey board is back here. Not exactly here, but... There's a fragment above me. I know there's a fragment above me, but I'm not going to go for it. I'm in the... I know I'm in the castle. I know exactly where I am. Hang on, there's a Comey board. There is a Comey board here somewhere. Oh no, hang on, don't go in there. Highlights on two. Yeah, but... It's normally there. See if I can find this Komi board for you guys. There's it. There it is. There it is. Oh, it's here. So I was on the right side. I knew it was. The, I knew it was on this side of the King's Palace. I just couldn't remember where. So this is Komi. Um, oh come on. There's no. There's literally. Oh come on, game. One sec. Let's see if I can just unspawn them, despawn them. Can you leave or do I need to complete the aura worm to keep stuff? You can leave. It's a great question that you go ahead and say that. Yes, you can go ahead and leave. The way that the leave system works here, so you don't have to go and complete these stages up above. You do not have to do that. You can simply just go ahead and click leave the very. And if you hover over it, it tells you right here, you will keep all your resources, rewards and intrinsics gained up to your last earned decree. Basically, if you're ready to leave, go get another decree, then leave. Okay, as soon as you've got that decree, don't do any more farming or anything else like that. You can just simply go ahead and leave, all right? It'll keep all of the progress. You do not need to do this spiral. I'm going to do the spiral anyways to show you guys what the aura worm is and so forth. Uh, so here's Komi. Komi is an interesting little game. I'm not going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to do the full game. But the idea is that you're looking to surround enemy stones. Have fun with it, all right? It's kind of like checkers, kind of. Not, not entirely. Uh, I can't quite remember where the best place to go was. Um, I'm going to go all the way at the bottom. I think like the bottom of the board was the best place. So the idea is that I, I'm looking for a way to surround everything if I can. Uh, and it has to be like a full surround. It's not so much diagonals, but it has to be like a bit of a full surround is what it's looking for. I think there that I'm worried about, right? Yeah, I think I want to lock in this area. That doesn't actually matter though, because again, I can just surround this. It's been a while since I've done this as well, so please don't like, <laughs> please don't judge me right now. Also, I'm actually surprised. So that makes sense that why I lost that one, because there's three blocking off here. So I need to surround basically this one if I want to drag it in. Oh, they're actually just picking me off right now, which is not great. So I can't place here or here because they've surrounded it. So it needs like, you see how like down, right, up. So they're like surrounded like that. I'm thinking in the bigger picture, they're taking me in the smaller picture. But my mind is like, I want this entire corner is what I'm fighting for. They're just fighting for like individual pieces. I want all of this. So that's all I'm all I'm trying to do right now. I don't mind them capturing that because that doesn't do anything. That also doesn't do anything right now. I 
don't think they can go ahead and get that at the current moment. So they block that off. See that? So now I get all of that. That's basically how it kind of works. So right now the score is currently five and two. Just try to, I don't think diagonals matter. So diagonals don't do anything, but basically just try and make sure you go ahead and get the rest of it. But it gives you an idea how to play Komi. Steel Path Komi, I think, is actually a lot harder than normal Komi. So it does scale as well. Okay. But that's Komi. It's pretty fun to go and play. All right. It's pretty fun to go and play. So if you're looking for something chill to go and do, you can go and do some Komi. Um, what was the other question? Was there anything else? Oh, no. I'm just looking for an owl puzzle if I can find one. I'm looking for an, a random owl puzzle. Not the Ark Harbor one because that one's going to take longer to explain. But I've got a video on the Ark Harbor one because it's way longer. Um, so I'm just looking for an owl puzzle, if I can find one. Um, owl puzzles, you go ahead and get these things called Enigma Gyrums. And Enigma Gyrums are used to go ahead and get the, uh, like, little owl kind of cosmetic. And you can also go ahead and get a bow called the uh, Center. Just whether or not I can... Uh, whoops. 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 Oh. There are not a single owl puzzle around here. Sorry, ghostlings. I feel you. Really, I do. But I'm going to ask my friend here to put you down. Slow down. This is unfortunate because I saw an owl puzzle earlier. And I ignored it because I wasn't ready to explain it. I wasn't ready to explain it. And now I need an L puzzle to go ahead and show you guys like what an L puzzle actually looks like. And what you do with them and how they work. <laughs> actually, I should have just done the first one I came across because I didn't realize it was going to be this RNG. I was hoping I'd uh, get a little bit luckier. No, no, just let it suffer, guys, all right? Don't, don't help the poor creature. Whilst I'm looking for this, is, is there anything else that I can go and show you? Again, besides from the spiral, is there any kind of questions that you guys have about the Viri? Any questions that you think someone might have about the Viri? Because if I can answer all of this stuff live, then it's pretty good. If not, I just have to cover everything else inside the comment section. Oh my goodness, these owl puzzles are just... Not the ones right now. Can be on the edge of like these circles as well, but it's not there. It could be here. It could also be along this stream. Sorry, this is gonna take a while to find the owl puzzle. I should have took the first one, I apologize. No, I just feel like I'm wasting time. I want to show you, like, how to do, do like, a small one. Uh, and then, hopefully, it gives you guys, like, an idea. I wish they had, like, one guarantee. Oh, this is to so... Uh, not to Soma. This is uh, Yao Shrubs, if you need them. Yao Shrubs always grow in, like, the... Uh, where am I right now? At uh, the bottom right. Uh, Yao shrubs always grow in um, like the snowy-ish areas if you're looking for Yao shrubs. So if you go to like the snowy uh, areas, you'll find around here.
I mean, I'll touch on what you're saying. I'm not going to use my two, but I encourage other people. If you want to go and use your two, it will highlight objectives around you. Guys, I'm color deficient. It doesn't do an awful lot for me at times. Please stop telling me to use my two. I've explained this enough times on my live stream, but I know that you was there to see it. It doesn't, it doesn't help me that often. If anything, it actually just confuses my eyes even further. This, this doesn't help me. So please don't ask me to keep using the two. Um, I encourage new players to go ahead and use it. Please go ahead and use the two if you're looking for a way to um, discover objectives a little bit quicker. Uh, I am just getting RNG'd right now. Okay, I'm going to spend like literally less than two more minutes on this because if I can't find it, then it is what it is. I have a guide on the owls if you do want to go and see them anyways, all right? Um, this is just really unfortunate RNG. Because they could literally be here as well. I'm going to spots where I know where they can spawn. Uh, they're just not spawning. Just unfortunate. Okay, I don't know what that zoom was. I'm going to try the castle one more. I'm going to try... Oh, God, I hate the map. <laughs> I'm going to try the castle one more time. The King's Palace. Because I have better luck with owls over there. Always get one here. Yeah. I'm gonna try here. No, there's a shrine hold in this position, which is really annoying. Which means there can't be a puzzle there. There can normally be a puzzle here, there's no puzzle there. There can normally be a puzzle here, there's no puzzle there. There could be a puzzle here, there's no puzzle there. Do you do you understand how RNG I'm getting right now? Like, do you guys get that? There's a lot of positions here where puzzles can go, and I'm not getting them. I'm on one puzzle, just one. I don't know if they can spawn on this back area. I don't think so. I think they can spawn down... Is it here? No. No. Sometimes, no. Uh, the other side of King. Where's this one? Are they here? Oh, this is actually insane. Okay, never mind. I was going to show you owl puzzles. Um, the idea is... Um, there's particular symbols and particular setups that you want to go ahead and do for them. Um, they're actually pretty fun to go and do. They're not as hard as what you think they are to go ahead and do. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to refer to you guys to go ahead and use my guides. Go ahead and see the owl puzzles. Um, I am just not getting lucky whatsoever. Try the King's... My advice, try the King's Palace. The King's Palace has got quite a few spawns for the owl puzzles, and I really like them uh, at the King's Palace. Because that's normally where I go to. And because there's so many different spawns there, uh, I normally can get myself one. So what I'm going to go and do now is I'm going to go ahead and do the... I'm going to go ahead and do the mission objective. Oops. There's a the very fragment over there, but... Okay, so all we're doing now is we're going to be doing the spiral. Again, you do not have to do... If you're in the Daviri experience, you do not have to do the spiral, okay? All of those things like the owls, the more fishing, all of that stuff, those are basically side quests, like side objectives. If you do the loan experience, so you know when you click on Daviri and you select the mode on the right, you can't do these things here, okay? So if you're like, hang on, how did you get fishing and, and how comes you can see owls and uh, all of like these random chests and whatever patrols and whatever. Um, if you took the loan experience, you won't see that. That's not the loan experience. 
Lysenia Saffron Shore. Um, so instead, what we're gonna go ahead and do... We're gonna go ahead and do the spiral now. So you would have been familiar with the spiral if you guys had obviously done the quest. Well, when you guys had done the quest, it's six stages, and then it's an, a, and then outside of the the quest, it's now going to be the aura worm. So six stages, and then the aura worm. That's how it's going to work right now. So we got the excavator. Not a great, great one to get, but it is what it is. You can see how I'm using like Volt as a, a bit of a defensive frame right now. I put shields in front of the excavator. Please die. Put shields in front of the excavator. I can stop enemies from hitting the uh, excavator, which is nice. Doesn't have to be too accurate as long as I go ahead and throw something out there. An extractor requires power. Volt, I'm mostly using his second and third abilities. I'm actually going to use the Lex instead. I was thinking the Braddon isn't feeling very good right now. I wonder if the Lex feels better. Uh, where's the cell? There it is. Oh, I do not like this stance. Okay, just stop blocking, please. Right, that was that one done. Is there any cells here? There's one cell here. 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 Looking for a good place to farm plastids, Saturn. You can get them earlier than Saturn, but uh, Saturn's a better place to farm them. You're looking for plastids. Saturn survival. Yeah. Saturn survival works. I'm gonna die here. God, it's a, it's a completely different game when you don't have uh, shield gate in her. Huh? Really brings you to your roots a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I would love to go ahead and get a new charge if you could give me the unit. Oh my god, this Xmas unit is not the one. Bro, they, they actually throw Overguard units at you in this. I didn't realize. I kind of feel a little bit bad for new players here. Definitely is uh, a bit more of a challenge than your traditional star chart. Right, that's that done. I need a cell, which is this one here. use melee at this rate the braddon is not a good pick
tough. Actually tough, genuinely. I'm very much surprised. I mean, I'm going to need things like proficient fire and whatnot. Like, I think if you're new to the game, I'd almost have to recommend people taking proficient fire and all this other stuff. Like, protect whatever little energy you have, honestly. Okay, we're done with this. So that's good. A way out is now open to you, but further buried riches are here. Level 40 plus enemies for new players is a little meh. Yeah, I don't um I'm actually kind of somewhat surprised. Like, don't get me wrong, uh, some decrees are gonna make this a lot better. Like, yeah. Some decrees are gonna make this a lot better, but for the most part, that is uh it's pretty tough. Also, I just forgot I'd gone for a melee route. So I need to remember to utilize melee a bit more. But normally, when it comes to spiral, I would not go melee routes. So I don't know why I went melee route this time. I think I just wanted to kind of mess about and do something different. Spiral do everything and anything that can affect your um, weaponry. I know you can jump down there. You've done it before. Thank you. I oh, know. Turn that way. Go, go. Okay, that's that done. Shame I don't have rerolls right now, which is really, really tough. None of this stuff is helping me. Critical roll will help me. I'm now starting to design my build for the aura worm in mind, because uh if that's how the Undercroft was feeling, that's pretty tough. So we get the Undercroft here again. Oh, no, we don't. Just straight Dax. Oh, my God. Stop. That's, that's them deads. Deadly momentum is going to be really good. But we don't care for that. We're just going to go straight in here. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, so we got this last bit of like spiral stuff to go and do. We could do the aura worm, and then I'm just gonna give you guys kind of like what I would do with everything. And that's basically like this this kind of episode is wrapped up. Um, it doesn't help because I threw myself off earlier, but I'll explain that in a bit. So forgive me if like all of my demeanor changed very quickly. Um, just some real life stuff. My demeanor changed very quickly during this episode. I went from like having a really good time to all of a sudden now in panic mode. <laughs> <laughs> now all of a sudden I'm in panic mode right now. <sighs> Problem is, I want to play with my melee right now, but this stance is actually horrendous. The combo is not great. Yeah, it's not great. Might be able to just play around with Lex here. Oh my god, please stop. This guy's just so annoying. I'm shooting through my shield right, shield right now because I can get the 200% critical multiplier as well, like I said. 
So this is going to be very helpful. Uh, plus, they can't really hurt me. So we're just going to chill here. I'd much rather just line up my shots as well than run around with his shields. Right, this is good because I've, I've managed to go ahead and showcase all three start of Warframes uh, during these uh, episodes, which I'm actually really happy about. So um, I'm really happy that we've managed to go and see all three of them. I don't want the magnetic proc to hit me, so I'm just going to run away. Screw that guy. <laughs> Screw that guy in particular. Only 60, seconds remain. Only 60 seconds. We dive into all of that. And we're good again. And into this. And we're good again. Life support drop point. Oh, the level 50s as well. Yeah. Like... Kind of crazy, to be honest. Imagine a new player doing this for like literally the first time. I mean, we're literally three hours on this account right now. And it's already level 50s, which is like maxed out star chart. Kind of crazy. Oh, I can't believe he hit me with the magnetic proc. I actually hate that these guys do magnetic procs. Magnetic procs are so rough. If you hear me say an awful lot, especially for the new players, magnetic procs will drain your energy, which is really frustrating if we don't want our energy drained. <laughs> so those units are really annoying in the, the very paradox update. That's a good spot for that. The moment I uh, stop. Gonna reposition. I think of where I want to go. Grab some resources whilst I'm here. We've only got 60 seconds and then we basically leave. So at this point, collecting some resources, probably not a bad shout. You'll see like during the Undercroft, um, because I'm not doing the circuit game mode anymore, there aren't the uh, fragments around. You guys, remember when I was talking about the fragments earlier? Uh, the decree fragments? You don't find them when you do the spiral story. It's only during the... Um... You only find them during the uh, the other story. Use my fourth ability there to just uh, crowd control them whilst I uh, casually just take the life support. I don't really need to kill them anymore, so I'm just kind of like... I just decided to go and grab materials instead, because killing them doesn't really serve a purpose now. So it goes with that. I'm just going to push them back a little bit whilst I leave. <laughs> okay, awesome. This is tough. Uh, we'll take bomb scenes for now, but... Right, so now we just need to go and reconnect the power lines. And then after this, this is what you're basically going to be doing the, the, the very experience for. Well, not so much just straight to the very experience, but I've already showed you guys how to do these. Right, okay, so 
We have now done all six stages, right? That's really good. We have now done all six stages. What's going to happen now is um, we're going to end up basically completing the spiral story. So you guys would have done this during the quest. However, there's one extra step now. We're now going to summon the Aura Worm. Um, so this is all going to be about how to take on the Aura Worm, what is the Aura Worm, so forth, stuff like that. So we're now going to be taking this on. So once you're done with all six, it will direct you to like one of these like stone things around there. So you're going to find one of these that it directs you to, okay? From there onwards, you're basically going to look for the rabbit, the rabbit that you named, whether you named it Lua, Soul, whatever you want to and Terra, it's all good. You're going to end up taking the obvious, right? Get back on your horse and get up into the sky. Uh, we're looking for it. So there's the Aura Worm. So Aura Worm spawned over there. We want to get towards the Aura Worm now, okay? So when the Aura Worm, you'll see it. Don't stay directly in front of it. It's a bad idea. But you see this thing that it's charging, that thing right there? We basically want to fire into it with the obvious. And when we go through it, oh my god, I literally just said don't go towards it. And I move towards it. That's why. That's a great example why you don't go face against it. Because it will do that and you'll get destroyed. Anyways, what we wanted to go ahead and do is it'll do this pulsing across these. If you watch, yeah, that. See that? It's now summoning this. And then that means it's ready to go ahead and fling this out. We're going to go and throw the obvious into it like a normal fire. And then we're going to go through this and we gain movement speeds. Significant movement speeds. It's going to do another one for me. We're going to throw into it. We'll spit into it. And now what we're going to go and do is click fire and we're going to attach ourselves to the aura worm. Now on steel path, this is where it gets a little bit more different, okay? But for now, all we need to go and do is make our way to the heads and not get hit by that. So we're going to jump off it with space and we're going to fire back on to get back onto it, okay? And we're going to make our way up all the way over here. So you don't have to grab this back one. If you can get the front ones, go grab the front ones. As you can see, you can skip a lot. Just don't get hit by this because it will knock you off. So time it and then make your way up to the front. On Steel Path, I don't know if I want to explain it too much right now, but this section is different, okay? A little bit different. Oh, come on, bro. I'm just... <sighs> I'm just trying to sit here talking and explain things to you guys. Like, you really got to throw me off? <laughs> come on, man. But yes, Steel Worm... Still... Steel Path Oro Worm is a different fight, which is nice. And honestly, it's more enjoyable of a fight, personally. So, we just gotta go and do that again. So, if you get knocked off, you know what to go ahead and do. These Wormlins are basically hitting me, which is really annoying. And now when you're at the front, you're basically going to transform into the Aura Worm. And what you're looking for is two conduits. So we're going to head towards this one because it's closest. These tethers. And like I said, when you're about 150 meters, that's when I tend to go and shoot. Blow one up, head towards the other one. You are timed to go and do this. There's a timer down there. And the top bar is for whenever you're holding uh, fire. So your like fire, uh, fire button. 150. Oh, whoops. I kind of zoned out. Okay, and now once we've broke both of the tethers, we're going to go into the portal. Only in its lair will it be now we're actually fighting the Aura Worm itself, which is really nice. I'm going to skip the cutscene here, but again, if you want to watch the cutscene, go ahead and watch it. Definitely worth watching it at least once to go and see what it's like. Anyways, we're now at the Aura Worm. Uh, all you want to go and do is focus on these kind of um, shield areas, if you will. See like the glowing things on it. I like to go and get up on a rock. And with Volt, I'm going to shoot through my shield to pop it. And it doesn't help because I can't see absolutely anything right now. There's one there. So I'm just going to keep shooting that. I'm just going to pick up my shield and then reposition it. So I'm going to pop that one. And then I'm going to take that one as well. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and get rid of its first kind of like health bar right now, which is really good. I haven't done normal still uh, normal one in a normal or worm in a while, so I don't quite think what they do. Wow, Brandon does nothing against level fifty overguards, so I've now got to go and kill fifteen Dax. I 
I'm just going to kite them around the, the arena. Just take my time here. I can land these headshots with this Lex. I should just be okay. And I heard one there. Okay, so the one's going to do the same thing again. Pretty easy to understand what it's doing. Oh, I just remembered. I've got Volt's passive plus deadly momentum. So hang on, watch this. I keep running the rounds. I'll pick the shield up as well, actually. Right, you ready? This next shot. Put that down. There you go. I can just one shot it. <laughs> I just realized A, I've got deadly momentum. B, I've also got Volt. Uh, now we just need to kill the Wormlings. Uh, whoops. I need to have one more revive, which is not great. I only care about survival now, just so that I kind of don't mess this up. And then there's that one as well. We're just going to keep moving until we can get the shield up. Oh, I could try to re-pick my shield back up. Screw my shield right now. My shield's in a bad spot. I'm not going to go back for that. Got that one. Try and reposition my shields here. Not reloaded. Got that. Okay, there you go. And then that's just going to be the Aura Worm boss fight done. Um, so that's going to be the concept of Daviri experience and the concept of loan experience. In the in the loan path, you're just going to basically focus on the six stages and the worm. In Daviri experience, um, you can do the worm if you want to at the end, but you don't have to. You can just simply ignore that. There'll always be a trader here if you want to go ahead and trade, but if you're done with everything at this point, you're now basically done. Uh, if you want to, in the Daviri experience, you can just go back out there. You can just carry on farming for materials if you want to but again you're basically done that's it that is literally it uh, i think i've covered everything is there anything i missed the only thing that basically does happen is colervo's update but unfortunately this won't cover colervo's update because it's not out at the moment i wanted to i i did debate about delaying this series for like an extra week or two um but i just don't think that that's a good idea um so i wanted to uh make sure that i got the um everything and anything to very uh paradox related so um i can give you guys a bit of a rundown on some stuff right now so this is going to be like the recap of everything uh, but otherwise it's almost four hours so yeah i think that was good i think we covered everything we need to so a bit of a recap what happened here we did the quest we did the very paradox quest we got that done out of the way uh the very paradox what is it it's a place kind of that was magically conjured and summoned up and fought off and imaginized by Drifter. So it's kind of his world, if you will. It's what he knows of it. Um, so that's kind of the very paradox. From there, you've got the different game modes. Um, the game modes are going to be on the left-hand side, Circuit. It splits into two different ways. You can have Steel Path or Normal Path. All of these can be Steel Path or Normal Path if you want to. Uh, Steel Path just scales everything uh, a lot harder and you can get different rewards from Steel Path or like the Aura Worm boss fight itself is different. But the Circuit, Circuit Game Mode, you fight in there in the Undercroft with your Warframes and you can go ahead and get different rewards and you can do this once a week to go ahead and get different things right here as well, okay? Um, uh, ideally i'd recommend always doing the circuit public so click up here click on public and whenever i click on this now i'm going to be joining other players keep in mind they might go a little bit quicker so if you're not fully, fully aware of what warframes and weapons to take um they might just go in and you might get a little bit confused so uh, i'd recommend doing it solo just for the time being and learning an awful lot about like circuit and what you're doing okay so circuit's gonna be for warframe steel path one is there steel path is for incarnates for, so for the returning players who are looking for the incarnate weapons i have a lot of breakdowns and my most recent video was actually about the top five incarnate weapons for you to go ahead and choose from i've actually ranked out all of the incarnate weapons as well like what ones would i take every week but feel free to go check out my youtube channel for that as well okay 
Uh, otherwise, we're then going to the free experience. This is literally just go out there and do what you want. Remember, you can leave at any point. Um, just make sure you grab a decree and you can leave with all your resources, everything else like that, so forth. So if you want to play the very paradox and really just feel what it's all like, I'd recommend do this one. You can stack as many decrees as you want to in that one session. You can loot as much as you want to. You can do puzzles. You can hang out with friends. You can ride the horse. You can fish. You can do whatever you want. This is like the main experience, right? But ranking intrinsic as well is like one of the better things that people do there. So feel free to go and do that. And then finally, the lone story is you are focusing purely on the spiral story, which you can also do here, right? But this one, you don't get side missions. So if you're looking to fish, you can't fish here. If you're looking to go and do uh, owl puzzles, you can't do owl puzzles here. This is, that's just how it goes, all right? I think I've covered everything about the very paradox. I'm going to open the floor. Is there literally any questions that anybody doesn't know about the very paradox that wants them answered right now? Um, I've got a little bit of a time for a Q&A. Otherwise, I think that's basically everything right there. Um, what would I do? Um, here's the route that I would go ahead and give you guys personally. This is what I would lean towards. Uh, that's Diablo stuff. <laughs> we'll figure this out. There you go. Here's the new notepads. Uh, sorry, all of this stuff got reset, so it looks different now, but whatever. Um, what would I go and do? First thing I would go ahead and focus on if I was you guys is to... Um, so number one, I would actually rank up my uh, Drifter Intrinsics. Okay, this is basically just playing. This is like your XP, so forth. Remember, it works better in groups, in my opinion. Go do the Daviri uh, experience. Go do that stuff, and you should just be getting uh, the uh, Drifter Intrinsics kind of passively. Uh, from there onwards, and this is kind of like, um, what else would I then go to focus on if I was doing Daviri Paradox? Uh, I would recommend trying to get something called Pathos Clamps. Um, you don't need too, too many of these, by all means, but... This is the very experience, uh, experience, and this is also uh, the uh, loan experience. Uh, between these two, oh sorry, loan story. Uh, between these two, um, you can go ahead and get your uh, pathos clamps. Okay, uh, you will need a few of these anyways, and they're, in my opinion, they're better utilized for end game players. So if you're a returning player, this is what I would definitely focus on. Is this you want to go ahead and take on the Oro Worm? Okay. This is what you want to go and take on. I showed you guys what it looked like and how to go and do it. On Steel Path, it's a little bit different. I would honestly rather you guys explore it and see what it's like and see how different the fight is. In my opinion, on Steel Path, it's way better to do because it's more engaging. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and do that as well. But Pathos Clamps, you're going to utilize on buying things like Incarnate Weapons or potentially Arcanes if you wanted to. My advice, just my advice, right here, right now, we are currently June 7th, 2023. What I'm saying right now might change in the future. I would only spend Pathos Clamps on Incarnate Weapons nothing else and i mean nothing else only on incarnate weapons um there's only so many times i could do the six stages then the oro worm i'm losing my mind farming this the oro worm is fun but the six stages i it's getting to me unfortunately okay i'm not going to go into that run and whatnot this is a new play experience i don't want to go and whatever but yes for a player like me i'm just a little bit tired of doing it i like the oro worm but there's no reason for the six stages <laughs> they're a little tedious um so try and save your Pathos Clamps up from there onwards. Rank up your Drifter, which I think is a good idea. Try and acquire... Oh, what's going on outside? Try and acquire uh, any of the new uh, melee weapons as well. So new melee weapons. Oh, sorry, the Pathos Clamps. I guess you can go ahead and get the new melee weapons. Um... I forgot that you can spend it on the new melee weapons. So try and get yourself the new melee weapons. That's probably what else. If you're a new player, get yourself the melee weapons. If you're a, a returning player or like a veteran player, get yourself the uh, incarnate weapons. Okay. Uh, but the new melee weapons are pretty fun to go and play around with. I've got a video on the new melee weapons and I've got videos on the incarnate weapons. So if you want to see more about that, go check them out. Um, anything else to go ahead and say here or do? Um... No, obviously, there'll be... Uh, keep in mind, this one is completely optional right now because it's not out, but Clevo update. Clevo update. I think I spelled his name right. Clevo update. Uh, this will be like a prison island that we're all going to be able to do and get a new Warframe called Clevo. He looks interesting. If you want to see more about him, you can go ahead and uh, YouTube him. Uh, check out uh, people like Tactical Potato, who's like covered videos on him and so forth. But um, dev streams have also covered videos on him, but I will cover a video on him when he's out. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see what Kaleva is like. Uh, besides from that, the other things that you can go ahead and do is just keep running your circuits. 
uh, the circuit um, and whether you want to do circuit normal or circuit steel path uh, just try and do these weekly put this on your like weekly missions to go ahead and do uh, because again once you kind of you do get extra rewards at the end of this i should go ahead and clarify you do get extra rewards at the end um so once you get to rank 10 what what happens you just get some extra you might get like credits and endo and so forth in my opinion it's not really worth farming from there onwards if you're having fun with it go for it but i would honestly not burn yourself on out on it i'd go off and do other things and then every week design designate like one day to go and do this it'll take you like two three hours depends how quick you are at it and depends how everything goes but take about two three hours to go and get everything done and then you're basically good for the rest of the week all right um yeah was there any questions or are we all good what happens to everything we have already is this is a complete restart or what it's not a complete restart you're fine you can just jump into it if you want to You can just join us whenever you want to. Okay, so I think we've got no questions or anything. So if you guys do have any questions uh, on the, the the normal kind of video and whatnot, not on the live stream, but if you guys have got any questions, please go ahead and reach out. Um, if there's something that you don't understand, uh, just go and let me know. Um, all I can go and say is right here, right now, if you guys have enjoyed today's video and you guys like this, please go and give it a like. I'm sorry that my demeanor changed earlier. I kind of doxed myself and I don't think you guys even realized it. Um, so I kind of need to go and I've already reset like multiple things, but whoops. Um, so I just, it changed my, it kind of caught me off guard. I was like, well, that shouldn't have happened. Never mind. So, uh, I just need to go and sort all the, the rest of that stuff out. I just had to change all my stuff. <laughs> so it threw me off completely. And my attitude was like, uh oh, but, um, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out today. Thank you guys for being here for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. This was episode four of the new player playthrough. Uh, I'm planning to do one more episode next week. Uh, but then from there onwards, I'm not really planning to do any more episodes. So I'm just letting you guys know this right now, okay? Um, I would love more attraction towards this new player experience, but it doesn't seem to be getting as much attraction as I was kind of hoping it would. Not that I was expecting it to be like banging, but um, I don't want to pour too, too much time into something that, um, you know, isn't going to be paying off an awful lot with all due respect. With all due respect, the man's got to go and pay bills and rent in other ways. So if I can spend this three, four hours doing other things or resting, I should do. But either way, I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. So again, please go and give a like. Please go ahead and if you've done the delivery path now and now you want to go off and play the rest of Warframe, go check out episode one, episode two, and episode three. But next week, episode five should be the finale. Uh, and I'm just going to basically tell you what I would be doing. It should get you into Warframe. There's a lot of elements and a lot of things I've not covered because there's just so much going to do, but it should go ahead and give you an idea how to get into the game, what you're looking for and how to go and do it. All right, so I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. Um, but I will catch you guys again in the next episode. So much love to all of you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out. I'll go ahead and leave a little wave off here. I'll see you guys next Wednesday for the final one. And uh, if there's any kind of questions or anything you would like me to go ahead and cover, that would be basically be the episode. Uh, I would go over anything, like literally anything, um, to try and help people understand what they're doing, okay? But anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. I'll see you guys later. Bye, bye guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>